Hey everyone and welcome to Comics from the Multiverse, the DC Comics podcast from Mail Fuzz TV. I am Peter and joining me as always is Matt. Hey, what's up? And also here is Connor. That was a, uh, you know, started with some with some energy and then just went off the cliff. I wanted to lure you into thinking that I was going to give you a proper introduction for a change. Yeah. Yeah, nearly worked. You nearly had me, but then, <laughs> you know, just too suspicious of your bullet. <laughs> just pull the rug out from under and be like, ha ha, never, Ginge, never. Okay, so we talk about DC Comics on this show. It's a week three, although it's technically week four, but it's a week three in terms of books because the whole month get pushed back a week because of how DC scheduled December and January. That's okay. Until next week. Until next week, yes. In which case, we have both a week four and a week five in the same week. It is, it is insane. But uh, coming up on today's show, books-wise, we have Naomi issue 1, we have Batman 63, Justice League 16, Shazam issue 2, Aquaman 44, Sideways 12, Freedom Fighters issue 2, and because it is the quieter week in terms of book numbers, um, me and Connor will be doing our punishment issues, I'll explain that when we get to them, but Connor's doing Red Hood Outlaw number 28, I'm doing Hawk and Dove number 8, and then Connor will be doing The Curse of Brimstone number 9. So, assuming he remembered to read these. I did, I just, was it number 9? I just went up one number from last time, but I mean, you, you can tell me if it's incorrect. No, it's alright, I read number nine. That's okay, we're good. There was, there was a moment where I went, did I read number eight again? <laughs> you could, I honestly wasn't sure. You could have forgotten, yeah, you could have forgotten what you what you read last time and just read it again. Yeah. I mean, not not to give you any spoilers, but when it got to Red Hood, I did have to double check that I wasn't missing an issue in, in between what I just did. That sounds about right. That sounds about right. Um, so, here we go for uh, the what is this episode one three nine? I think we're on something like that. Something like that. Oh, probably. Did... I, I go know. for you for the numbers. So yeah, shambles. Well, I'm glad you're asking for numbers, Matt, because we have special numbers to talk about this week uh... on the show. We have sales figures not only for the month of December. We also have the year-end sales figures for twenty nine or twenty eighteen rather, not twenty nineteen. I'm, I'm not predicting things for the future. Don't he worry. said sales numbers. I didn't realize it was plural. <laughs> Don't worry. I'll, I'll make the December ones pretty quick because we're doing the year-end okay. ones. Uh, so much to Connor's demand, I will not make you guess the monthly sales for December. What I will say though is. Out of the top five books for December, four of them are Batman books. <laughs> there were that nice. many Batman books in December? Yeah, uh, well, number four and five are Batman 61 and 60. Um, so what do you think the all two Batman books are? Did Did you Bat Batman Who Laughs. That was number one. Yeah, and was then, Tomasi's uh, first issue a te detective yeah. in that month? No. No? No. Uh, so yeah, Batman Who Laughs was 220,000, that was a big launch. Uh, mm -hmm. Number two was Batman Damned issue two. Ah, uh, uh, there we go. There with 138,000, which, given that was a 699 book, they made bank on yeah. that. Uh, number three was also DC, though. That was Doomsday Clock number eight with 123,000. So DC uh, ruled the top five completely. Um, wait, no, so what was one and two? One was. Who Batman laughs? Who laughs? And two was Damned. Oh, so yeah. Damned was. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, da Damned issue two was number two. Yeah. If that was right, confusing. I'm with you. Uh, so three was Doomsday Clock number eight, then Batman this year's worth uh, four and five respectively with 91,000 and 88,000 each. And then number six was Amazing Spider-Man number 11 with 79,000. Mm -hmm. And then we had Fantastic Four at number seven, that was issue five with 78,000 as well. Number eight was Amazing Spider-Man number 12 with 75,000, so just a few thousand dropped there for that issue from the previous one. Number nine was Batman Annual number three with 68,000. That was the best Batman book of the month, so that should be number one, damn it. <laughs> yeah, it's criminally low. <laughs> who was that written by? Oh, that's a good point. Who was that written by? <laughs> Tom Taylor. Thank you for the cue, Matt. Thank you for the cue. That, that Fantastic Four book, was that the wedding issue? That was the wedding issue. That was a seven ninety nine yeah. book. Good Oof. lord. Yeah, so it did... I mean, for a seven ninety nine book, it's still a lot. I mean, I don't know if it's necessarily as big as they'd like issue 750 or whatever it was what it really mm. was 700 i think was it 700 yeah uh so it was a big issue number 10 was shazam issue one with sixty six thousand. so shazam wrote top 10 dc killed yeah. it yeah yeah that, that's um for the record was it five that's... seven seven out of the top 10 is dc yeah. Yeah. And, and two of the top 10 are jeff john's books yeah that's true <laughs> and all of the top five are dc's so 
That yeah. is a very good showing for DC in in December. Uh, so just glancing down some of the other notable things, uh, Green Lantern issue two was at number fourteen with sixty four thousand. That's still pretty good. Yeah, Justice Leagues were at eleven and sixteen respectively with sixty six and sixty one thousand. Mm. I'm just glancing for the notable things. Superman issue six because I know Matt likes to know was it was at number yeah. twenty four with fifty two thousand. Mm. Where's Action Comics? Not not nearly high enough. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> Wherever it is, it's too high. I'm going to have to control F this because my eyes are not catching it. Oh, it's there, probably, unfortunately. <laughs> oh, there is no action comics because it got pushed to the first week of January. Oh, that's right. That's fine. That's fine. <laughs> no that's action right. comic. That's okay. That's okay. That's not funny, Connor. That makes sense. Uh, it's a so little bit funny. That also means there was only one detective. That was at number 26 with 51,000. That was Detective 994. So that was the first Tomasi issue. Uh, so, uh, so that was maybe up slightly from the previous. Yeah, but it's not but breaking not... any records, is it? I mean, I think a double ship book at fifty-one thousand an issue is probably quite pleasing. I'm them. sure they're happy with it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, one issue of Flash, uh, forty-two thousand. That was number thirty-six, which is about the same as the recent issues. So, uh, and then next one, I'm ca- my eyes catching is Justice League Dark at number thirty-nine with forty-one thousand. Again, that's pretty solid for for. Yeah. What, I mean, even though obviously that book's quite popular amongst DC fans, it's definitely a lower book in terms of name recognition. Yeah, even with the Justice League brand on it, yeah. that's probably the only thing that gets it as high as it is. Even though it's a fantastic book. Nightwing. I'm just glancing for Nightwing out of interest. Uh, Nightwing number fifty-four is at sixty-one with 28,000. Unfortunately, it's barely dipped since uh, Rick Grayson, which that's, is that's baffling. 28,000 too many people. It's, <laughs> it is baffling that that's not timed. I, I actually am annoyed at people who are still buying that book. I'm looking at you, yeah, Dan. This, this is why they're not changing it back anytime soon. That's upsetting. That's all I'm saying. It's <laughs> upsetting. Anyway, uh, so we do have the year-end sales, though, which is perhaps the more juicier figures to, to look at. Uh, because we have, so I'm going to make you guess number one because I think this is really easy. Matt, Action what was the number one book of 2018 with mm. 504,000 copies? It's Action 1000. There you go, Connor got it. Okay, it's an easy one, but easy I'm not doing, that. That one is easy. Yeah, that's why I made you guess. I, it's I, easy I can peasy. tell you now. I can tell you the 2019 top issue. <laughs> it's just Detective 1000. You're probably right. It probably is Detective 1000. I'll be surprised if it isn't. Um, so number two was Amazing Spider-Man 800 with 439,000. So, so these are all going to be Keystone issues where Shops just ordered a ton of them because yeah. the milestone. Pretty much. Uh, number three is Batman 50 with 412,000. Number four is Fantastic Four number one with 381,000. Oh, well. no, number five is Amazing Spider-Man issue one with 298,000. Having their cake and eating it there too with 800 number yeah. one. Look at that. Yeah. Uh, number six is Return of Wolverine number one with 269,000. They sense. cheated on those numbers. Yeah. They inflated them with variants. Oh, no, sure. they do. They always do, Marvel. Number seven yeah. is Venom number one with 248,000. And I know you like it, Connor, but they're still cheating. <laughs> they're cheating, but at least that one has some quality behind it. Uh, number eight was Amazing Spider Man 798 with 242,000. So credit to them, at least the, the issue is going up to 800, but also kind of yeah. rising up. Number nine was the Batman Who Laughs with two hundred twenty six thousand, so that wow. actually snuck out of the top ten of the year. And then number ten was Amazing Spider Man seven nine nine with two hundred six thousand. So Marvel actually won the top ten for the most part In- of the interesting year. Interesting to me that seven nine nine was lower than seven nine eight. I know it's strange. Um, so looking more specifically at DC stuff after that, number eleven was Justice League number one with two hundred three thousand. Number 12 is Dark Knight Metals, number 6, with 190,000. Um, okay. Doomsday Clock 3 was number 14, with 175,000. And then just looking further down here without getting too specific, we have Dark Knight's Metal issues and Doomsday Clock issues kind of alternating as, as DC books. Uh, Heroes in Crisis, number 1, was number 20, with 150,000. Batman Damned issue 2 got to number 23, so that's actually higher than issue 1 by the looks of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's because everyone under-ordered issue 1, and mm-hmm. then there was the whole bat dick controversy, and people yeah. had their orders. It's not the bat dick I want to be hearing about, I'll tell you that right now. No. <laughs> <laughs> Easy peasy. Um, 
Is there anything specific you'd like me to check and see where it placed overall in the year? No. No? No, because I don't want to be depressed. Well, since you phrased it like that, I'm searching for Superman issue. <laughs> <laughs> Superman! The question is, did it crack the top 100? It did. Oh, easy. It did. Yeah. Uh, number 27 with yeah, 136,000. Not bad. It's not not bad. at all. It's, um... Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's above a bunch of stuff. Uh, it's, it's above a bunch of Batman well, I issues. So if it's at twenty-seven, yeah, yeah. No, it's not bad. It's not bad. Um, oh, here's something funny. Is it? Yeah, <laughs> the highest-ranking issue of Red Hood. <laughs> is Too it not? Is it number six hundred and sixty-seven <laughs> with thirty thousand? That should not be in the top one thousand. <laughs> Uh, and for the record, who's reading these books? That's actually for, for the... that's the only single issue. The other ones in the, the list are all uh, uh, trades. What, which issue was that? That's issue twenty-seven. I think that's when it changed to Red Hood Outlaw, yeah. and uh, that's where the direction changed. So people must have jumped on for that issue, possibly. Yeah. yeah. Or yeah, he dropped wow. the team and went so. Solo. So either, either they're they're getting it uh, by less than uh, great great ways or there's a whole bunch of people that really love red hood but might not be buying the book you know what i mean because yeah. i see a whole lot of red hood talk on the internet and maybe it's just my dc you know section that, that i live in but yeah i mean you pro you're probably seeing all of them all thirty thousand yeah. of them <laughs> yeah right because <laughs> uh, it's just, it just it's just not matching like i get the batman stuff like people you know who don't read comics like batman right like and Superman and Spider Man. Like, those are big characters, Wolverine. But Red Hood gets an awful lot of talk on the internet. It and does. For only mm. one, for, for, for the, the best selling book of the year for them comes in at 667, which, come on, guys, you got to get a little harder to get to 666. Like, 767, just to correct that. Oh, 767. I thought, you said down. Six, I thought you said 667 six, as yeah. well. Yeah. Was it 676 six or 767? Six, you said 776. It seven, started with 6, I'm sure. Yeah. You said six six seven. No, seven six seven. I must have misspoke. Seven, okay. Seven, so it's six, even seven. worse than I thought. Even worse. Yeah. yeah. Um, so. Although now I have to ask because Matt's mentioned it. What was six six six? Six six six. Yeah. Was it something suitably demonic? I'm scrolling. I'm scrolling. Was it be, better be worthy of the number of the beast. Wait. Yeah. No, am I on the right thing anymore? Oh, I went down to the trades list. That's what. I, was. I was like, why is there only five hundred of these now? Six six six. Almost there. Did you tell what? me this was Brimstone? I'm going to throw something. Honestly, this is kind of fitting. I, I, I don't know what the book's about, but the title actually kind of works. Uh, uh, number 666 is issue two of Doctor Strange Damnation. Huh. Okay, that. I'll let it slide. Yeah. That's I think that was the, the, the relaunching where he had lost the, the, the mantle of Sorcerer Supreme to Loki, mm. and he had a fight to get it back. So... Oh, curious. So this is... Out of curiosity, the sake, started. I was going to say, out of curiosity's sake, I've looked at the what number 1,000 is, because that's what it goes up to, it goes up to what number mm. 1,000. Uh, with, <laughs> so the, the bottom listing book in the top 1,000 has got 26,099 copies. So that's what the, the bottom yeah. end of 1,000 is. Uh, mm. that, that is a True Believer's Venom Carnage issue one. <laughs> Isn't that like one of those dollar, books. dollar reprints? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It is. Yeah. So that outsold yeah. proper 20, new books. 000, what was it? 20,000? 26,000? 26,000. There oh. are 26,000 people buying a $1 reprint? I mean, it is $1. I guess that's maybe what... Yeah, but... Yeah, beep, 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 yeah my shop that. orders a bunch of those, and then if they have too many of them, they just give them out on sale days. Like, because what are they out? Not, not a lot. And so, then, just for curiosity's sake, number 52. It is a DC book. Yeah. It is Batman 47 with 102,000. So... It couldn't have been Batman was 52, that... could it? <laughs> no. Wait, was 47 during the booster stuff? Um, mm, it may have been right that. after. It either was uh, the end of that or right after it. Okay. Because that would have been cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I just glanced at the top 10 trades of the year. Um, Infinity Gauntlet was number one. I guess the movie <laughs> drove sales. Uh, yeah, but it makes sense. As per usual, there's like three volumes of Saga. <laughs> At the top, that does well on trade. Yeah. trade. Image books do well yeah. on trade. 
They really do. I, uh, that, yeah, I was gonna say most most of those indies I feel do like that. Like because mm. anytime I've gone to Barnes and Noble when they're having a sale, those books are, are hard to come by because I think people go and that's when they pick them up. Plenty of DC and Marvel, but I have enough of those. Yeah. So you know, yeah, volumes nine, one, and eight of that are two, three, and four, and then number five is Action Comics eight eight years of Superman hardcover. That one that people ordered thinking that Action 1000 would be in it, and it wasn't. Yeah. Nope. <laughs> yeah. Uh, number six is Walking Dead, volume 29. Walking Dead's always in there. As, uh, number seven is Paper Girls, volume one. Makes sense. A Brian Key so you vol- tell me there's, you tell me there's 29 volumes of The Walking Dead? Yep. Good lord, I remember when that number one launched. Yeah, I, I actually had... Yeah, old uh, Matt. I had eight of the hard covers, and that was like two trades each. So that was like the first sixteen volumes. So now there's more. There's, there's more than double of what I read of Walking Dead. I remember existing. Th- there was at least two compendiums, which were like fifty odd issues each. Yeah, right? th- th- those were eight, vo- eight eight trades each. Basically, yeah. the way that worked is that was like uh, so you had like a trade, then you had two trades in a hardcover, you had two hardcovers and an omnibus, and then you had the compendium, which was like eight trades, I think, in one book. Lord, you can murder somebody with that. Oh, you, you could. could kill a horse with those things. You absolutely could. <laughs> uh, so number seven was How Paper Girls Volume those, One. those though? Like, I don't know. They were paperback as well, weren't yeah, so they? The so they weren't just... even like the sewn boat binding or anything like that. Yeah, there's the spines just creased on them. They're, 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 I wouldn't read those. I, the hardcover is quite nice though. My yeah, God. that sounds like a reasonable length. Hardcovers are quite nice. Uh, omnibus hardcovers are also quite nice, although they're more expensive. But they're they're like four trades per book, and they're you know sewn binding. I think so. They're they're, they're reasonable. Anyway, uh, so number eight was Batman White Knight. Number nine was Dark Knight's Metal Deluxe. Uh, number ten was Monstrous Volume 1. So there's your thing. Uh, Monstrous just... is getting so much praise everywhere. I- I've seen so many people call it the, the next big fantasy epic. Huh. And Not for me I then, read the but... first issue at the time, <laughs> and I-, 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 I quite liked it. The first issue was like a 70-page a thing they did for like the regular price. Hmm. Um, which is why I read it, and it was pretty good. But I mean, I I didn't feel like oh, I need to I need to be on this. Oh Matt, there's actually a volume thirty of The Walking Dead out. It just wasn't in the top good ten. Lord. <laughs> uh, Watchmen's at number thirteen. That's obviously a mainstay up near the top usually. Yeah. Uh, Green Lantern Earth One uh, is at number eighteen. That's pretty good. That's good. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's good. That's what it is. Uh, Killing Joke Special Edition hardcovers at twenty one. I'm just looking at some of the DC stuff that's high up just to see if what's selling wonder woman earth one volume two is at 25 uh flash volume one lightning strikes twice that's the uh the new 52 volume right mm-hmm. that's number 32 so. yeah so is it? i think that's lightning strikes twice i mean it might be as a volume one i'm pretty sure that's the new 52 one uh but i'll do i'll do uh yeah uh, i did check batman 47 was the uh the gift. Boost to gold. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, also, Lightning Strikes Twice is the first volume of Rebirth. Oh, was okay. it? Uh, they co- I mean, yeah. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Oh, fair enough. Oh, yeah. Uh, the first New 52 one's called Move Forward, I think. I don't think about it. Well, there I you go. Called Move Forward. All right. Well, there you go. There's your, your top list for, for 2018. Um, some, some not, not surprising stuff, but it's interesting to see how things stack up uh, yeah. overall. Uh, but, yeah. So, yeah, that'll do. Uh, that'll do for sales figures. Uh, so let's look at solicits because solicits came out this week. Yeah. And that's yeah. that's the thing we like to look at. Um, notable things before we just sort of skim through, perhaps, and see if anything sticks out to us. Uh, wise. Uh, Dan Jurgens has taken over Nightwing. Uh, with April's issue, but it is still Rick Grayson. How they didn't do that to me. Honestly, given that, like, he, given that he took over Green Lanterns and then ended after one arc, I feel like Nightwing is going to end after an arc. True. That's the feeling I'm getting. Yeah. True. It's good. It's going to end with Wreck, and then we'll get we'll get real Dick back in either Batman seventy five or Batman one hundred. You know, whatever. I was looking at the end of this solicit. I just says so they can't even put a K on Wreck. Just R I C. Yeah. And it the Nightwings, like. Yeah. <sighs> um, there's a crossover happening between Deathstroke and Teen Titans which is co-written by Priest and Adam Glass who obviously is on the Teen Titans book uh, so that's going for, for a while uh, it's, it's, that. it's actually parts 2 and 3 that are out so it's, it starts in March and then I don't know how many, many issues it's going to run but I, I presumably probably 4 to 6 Yeah. 
So so that's going on as well. What's that? That's called the Terminus Agenda. That's what that's called. So that's you got that going there. Um, other than that, uh, sorry, I just I just glanced at the solicit for Deathstroke Forty Two. Sure. De- Deathstroke finds himself powerless and restrained inside Damien's secret prison. Damien has a secret from, prison. Yeah, from from Teen Titans. We saw him put Brother Blood there. Uh, I obviously stopped reading it by then. I was like, what, yeah, what yeah, the yeah. hell? Yeah, that was in the special. Yeah, yeah. That was the start of Adam Glassy stuff, I think. Yeah. Yeah, that was in the enough. special. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, someone pointed I haven't just noticed this, but someone pointed out that Martian Manhunter is missing, so that's skipping a month, seemingly. Yeah. yeah. So that sucks. Maybe it's just a case of letting uh, what's his face get ahead. Osmo. Osmo, thank you. <laughs> I forget his name. Uh, so yeah, obviously, as as per usual, I, I think it's notable. Someone pointed out that this is the first time in a long time that DC have actually put as many variants as they could in the solicits, yeah. so that you can make your orders a bit earlier, uh, which is nice. Obviously, knowing, knowing these things earlier is always a good thing. Uh, and there are some fantastic variants in there. There are. There are some really great ones. So, I mean, those were the things that stuck out to me. There's, there's no real new ongoings or anything like that. There are some cancellations, however, though. Um, we have the end of Damage. And we also have the end of Titans. Uh, Titans being the, the one that I think me and Matt are a little bit bummed yeah. about. Yeah. Also, so I was looking at the solicit for damage and Congo Bill's in there. <laughs> and now I'm very upset. Because Loki, the Golden Gorilla, one of my favorite characters, did not know they were showing up in damage. I have literally never heard you mention him. And he's one of your favorite characters all of a sudden. Yeah. yeah. Well, because I never get to bring it up organically. <laughs> he brings it's never up relevant. Golden Gorilla. Who cares? Yeah. Like, all right. Okay. Um, You'd but find yeah, a way. Let's yeah. <laughs> mention that detectives still double shipping, and we had some. That's true. That's true. On whether or not I would. Detectives still double, also, double shipping. Yeah. Uh, there's a couple of trades I want to talk about real quick. One of them sure. is the uh, Tim Sale Jeff Loeb Challenge of the Unknown, which mm. was like one of the first projects they worked on. That's getting a looks like a cheap paperback, uh, so that's pretty cool. Uh, eight issues, and then there's this other one by Venditti that looks really cool, called Six Days: The Incredible True Story of D-Day's Last Chapter. And it's a hardcover, um, and it feels like a throwback to when DC did War Comics. Like it looks gritty. Uh, I don't know if it's being put out by DC. I mean, it's in the the solicits, so like, yeah, yeah. I actually yeah. I just control F uh, part one to yeah. see if there was any start of arcs that were worth talking yeah. about, and I got no results. Um, so gotcha. unless they didn't phrase it like that but there is one set that say part two because I, I, I f part two just mm. to make sure that they phrased it that way uh, yeah, and they have done another solicits so yeah. it could in just be a weird a... month where there's no arc starting because it just everything happens to be in the middle yeah, yeah. In, terms of, in terms of trades there's that uh teen titans raven one i think it's the the zoom ink whichever one the team one is yeah yeah, yeah. Oh. Um, oh. Yeah, cool. it's it's by that artist that did uh you know that <coughs> image that you like matt with um with the you know, in the the nasa shirt yeah. Mm. Yeah. Oh, it's that by Piccolo. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah Flash by Mark oh. Wade book six is coming out, which I'm happy to see that continuing. They're getting close to finishing it. I think there's maybe a couple of books left yeah. in that. So that's yeah, cool. Yeah. Six, obviously, seven. next month's going to be a bit more interesting because obviously the, here we're finishing off this Batman arc. Is the end of this month? Yeah, that's true. And we know we're starting a milestone arc with the the next one, right? Yeah, I think so. Um, so that's cool. Also. We've, we've cancelled a few books in the last few months, you know, two this month, a few of the New Age books have cancelled over the last couple of months. I feel like we're probably gearing up for some new announcements in May or June. Yeah, yeah that's interesting, because there was a lot of speculation on Twitter this week about what's going on with DC, because someone saw that, because um, between the cancellations between the New Age, the things that they've had, um, they've stopped doing the, uh, the Hanna-Barbera books, um, they're publishing about half of what they were uh, two years ago. Um, and um, there was some speculation. Obviously, there was the the what turned out to be not huge news of the 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 restructuring. This yeah, week. it ended up being like three percent. Well, don't get me wrong; it sucks for the people who lost their jobs, but it it wasn't yeah. anyone like that it sticks out to me as someone who would affect the books we're going to be reading that much. There's some like editors in there that yeah. might have had maybe more influence than we realize. Um, yeah. Like coming from creators themselves tweeting about it, who are like, "Hey, you're gonna miss this." I yeah. know before it happened though, there was a lot of speculation that that DC might be refocusing and going all in on the all ages because, you know, Black Label seems to be kind of dead right on arrival. Yeah, yeah like, Black Label's kind of dead. Although to be honest, the the statement they put out actually seemed to veer away from even that. It was it was really emphasizing 
No, direct you market still are epic stories. Yeah. Yeah. Direct markets are, are core. That's what we're focusing on. But but also to be fair, Black Label, I feel like they announced it too soon. They did. They absolutely did. Like a lot of those books were still in the works. So I, to to you know yeah yeah I feel I feel like they wanted some big news for whatever con that was at because it was yeah. a big con. They had this big list of things. They should have kept that back for a year. They should have waited uh, yeah, until the books were close to being ready. Yeah, same, same with the... Zoom and Ink because we've been waiting for those for a while. I think they got announced at the same time, right? Yeah. To be fair with Zoom and Ink, though, they, it does feel like now that they've started, they've got a consistent yeah. one or two trades a month mm-hmm. coming out. It yeah, seems yeah that, consistent. that feels that doesn't feel like it's dead by any means. That feels like mm-hmm. no, it, it's maybe they announced it slightly too early, but I think that's the case of when you're working for the book market rather than for the direct market. You kind of have to be yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah, uh, a little bit different. It makes sense. Also. So, side track real quick. I, I took my niece to the bookstore this weekend, this past weekend, mm-hmm. and Would let her pick it? out what she wanted. <laughs> yeah, so so I tried to point her in the direction of the DC superhero girls, right? Mm-hmm. But, but she didn't want that. She wants Teen Titans Go. Okay. So yes. her first comic, because based off the TV show, which according to her, my sister-in-law doesn't let her watch. So, um, yeah. Uh, that that was her first comic, and Bingo. I told her she can come over watch the movie, uh, right up her alley. So yeah, just get 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 her young. I <laughs> uh, didn't see any, you know, of the other DC stuff, but once that's out, it'll yeah, be yeah, nice. you plan on getting us some of the Zoom and Ink books. I do. Indoctrinate so, her young, Matt. Get get her young. Get her. That's right. Get her addicted. Well, right she now. for whatever did, reason did she loves Starfire. Joke? Why wouldn't you so, love Starfire? Well, I but she does. For someone that hasn't watched the show. Like she watched any of it though, because I she be... she might have. I mean, she knows how to navigate YouTube, so I'm sure. Seeing the you know, she's one. nine. Yeah, but she loves Starfire. So the fact that there wasn't enough Starfire in the Superhero Girls, but she was in Teen Titans Go. So now I'm trying to remember if there's supposed to be a Starfire Zoomer Inc. Book. I don't recall one. Uh, no. But hey, the Raven one might be might be enough. I'm have to check it out first. Yeah. Yeah. And then I, we'll go. It's probably all right. Um, yeah. there's the mirror one coming pretty soon, right? Yeah. yeah. So, mm-hmm. what were you going to say, Pete? I don't know. I, 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 oh. I'm gearing up questions for the next part. I'm just. <laughs> oh, gotcha. um, but uh, yeah. So, no. So, so lessons were kind of uneventful. A couple of cancellations, and that was about it. I did laugh at um, people freaking out over the Green Lantern Six solicit. They mentioned how Hal's trying to join the Black Stars and his last test is to kill Adam Strange, and people are like, "Oh, why is he wanting to join the Black Stars? Why is he going to kill Adam?" Strange? It's like. Come on, people! It'll clearly, he's, he's, he's one. It's it's clearly some sort of infiltration. Two, yeah. he's obviously not going to kill Adam Strange. Yeah, yeah. People people like to freak out over sources a bit too much. I think. Like, I know. Bit of common sense, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, but it's Morrison. You can't have common sense with Morrison because literally <laughs> anything can happen. I mean, sure, but he's not okay. going to kill Adam Strange. But don't, we, you don't know that. Of course, uh, the Heroes in Crisis issue eight cover uh, has everyone terrified, <laughs> but yeah. because of what it implies about Wally. Again, until the last issue is out and it's actually reached the end of the story. That was, I, I that was my favorite story of the week. People getting all twisted up about it because of what uh, Gerard said or Garrett said. Mm. Yeah. Um, but it's like, well, yeah, the company line is while well, he's dead. So, of course, he's going to talk about him in the past tense. And not... yeah, no, I, he's I, not going to spoil his story. I, like... I shared that, that tweet to our, our Facebook group. Yeah. And Pete goes, oh, the, you know, if he was dead, they'd never let him tweet that. And I'm like, yeah. no, 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 no. That's why they're letting him tweet it. Yeah. Get people uh, believing it so that when he's not dead, it's like, oh, it's a nice surprise. Exactly. That was my point. That, that was my point. Yeah. Because he's so tweeting it's that, gonna be... it's a misdirect. So either either it's going to be a very nice surprise or a very very terrible kick in the ball <laughs> surprise. Yes. And yeah, but either way, we're still on our toes. Like they you know what they're doing. Yeah. Yeah. We'll see. We'll see. Oh, and people are well. kicking off about the Jesus book. Oh, what's this? I didn't hear about this. Uh, second coming. Uh, it's the second uh-huh. issue is out. This one. It's basically you know Jesus comes back and he's in a world of superheroes. It's with a knockoff Superman basically. I want to read uh, this. Yeah, um, looks pretty fun. Mark Russell, who I think he was the guy who did the Flintstones book that people liked. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's he's doing something I just saw too. Yeah, there's, saw so there's so a... what, so correct if I'm wrong here, but so this was like, like Fox News or something did a thing about how there was a book about a second coming. 
<laughs> yeah. And, and now we're happy about it. <laughs> with hundreds of thousands of signatures asking for DC to cancel the book, which they haven't done yet. Nah, they shouldn't. Here's the thing. If you don't like <laughs> it, don't read it. Move on. I'm, I'm hoping don't... DC doesn't cave under the pressure because I actually really want to see this book. I, 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 as, as someone who is not religious, the thought of a book that is there to essentially mock, <laughs> mock like, religion I, is a hilarious. I'll just to read me. the solicit text for issue two because it's quite short. Go on. Uh, it says, "An unexpected death leads to God showing off His heavenly kingdom to the son He wished He had, while the son He has catches up on the earthly plane." <laughs> oh, I wanted this book so bad, and it has nothing to do with me not liking, you know, established religion that much. I like. It just sounds fun. I'm just like, look, if we have a book where we have Thor running around crushing stuff with a hammer, why can't we have Jesus, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. Oh dear, oh, dear. It's just the, the, the premise to me is hilarious because the whole idea is that yeah. God thinks Jesus is a disappointment because he screwed up so badly when he went down. So he sends him back down to, you know, yeah. learn his it's ways. Like, so is this book already out or is it coming out? Nah, it's just no, it's the first soon. issue will be March. Right, okay. Oh, yeah. So it was in the, yeah. the last solicit. So that, well, that yes. makes sense because actually two was in this solicit. Yeah. Was, did did really we talk obvious. about Terrifics last yeah. week? Um, did we? I don't think so. Oh, I don't think we did. Yeah, we should mention that. Terrifics, uh, yeah. uh, basically, as me and Matt predicted correctly, <laughs> I want to say. Best Pat is in the back here, Matt. Um, Jean Lin Yang is taking over Terrifics with issue 15 because we knew Lemire was ending with 14 because he he was given up uh, work for hire right. and we knew he'd written 14 issues. So this was kind of expected. We, we thought it might just get cancelled, but we thought that if it was going to continue, it would be Jean Lin Yang uh, because he did the annual. And it turns out that was correct. And I'm cool with this news because I like his writing and I like his, yeah. his annual issue. I like New Superman a lot. So this is good news. Yeah. So also real quick, Mark Russell, what I said I just saw, Wonder mm -hmm. Twins. He's doing the Wonder Twin book. That's oh, right. So, cool. I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. which is a so, mini, by the way. They never made that clear yeah. before, but it is a mini. Yes. Yeah. So, um, yeah, he's cool. doing all sorts of weird stuff. Cool, cool, cool. All right, there you go. That's soliciting news talk for the week, unless there's something I'm forgetting, but you can tell us in the comments if there was. So, all right, so what we'll do is then we'll do a few questions before we move on to the books themselves. Um, oh no, I've clicked away from that thing that I clicked. Um, there we go. I found it again. I found it again. It's fine. It's fine. No, because I, had, I asked this a couple of weeks ago as well and we didn't do the questions. So I've got, I've got a couple of questions from two weeks ago. I've got a couple of questions from this week um, so that it's evenly distributed and fair. So Better be good. A couple of questions. Here's a hard one from at Talking Superman, regular appearing guest. Friend of the show. Friend of the show, yes. Um, who is a DC character that you think seems interesting but you haven't read a lot of due to a lack of content that seems to your liking? I've been thinking about this one because I remember this question. Oh. Yeah, it's because you get a head start on us. I, I've been struggling though. I've been struggling to think of a character who's not got enough because most of the ones I can think of, it's like, well, no, nah, they've got a lot on this team and I've just not read that team yet. Because we've read a ton of DC. like. Yeah, but I get it. But it's, it's books that maybe don't appeal to you as well though. Like, like theoretically... Like you guys could have had Harley Quinn as an answer, right? Sure, like you, okay. you really don't like that book, but you you mm. you are interested by the character. Like that, I think that's how I'd interpret the question. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's to your liking. So, yeah, could, do you think you'd like this character if there was books that maybe skewed more to your taste, perhaps? Yeah. Um. Yeah, I don't know. I'm. I'm. It's tough. Because I, I feel like a lot of the the smaller characters I like, you know, are on the GSA, and I feel like that's enough. Like you know, like GSA is enough for a lot of those characters to to yeah. feel like I'm getting an ample amount of them. Um, you know, um, I don't know. Maybe I'd say maybe, maybe someone like Lobo, where I can see the appeal. Mm. No, 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 I get what it is, and I can see yeah. a story with that. But there's never been a good story with Lobo that I've read. I I used to feel that way about Damien. And then, because, like, he was fine with Morrison, but yeah. he needed someone to play off of. And then uh, when Tomasi got a hold of him, I, yeah. I've really, you know, I haven't read anything by Tomasi that, with Damien in it that I haven't enjoyed, at least just a little bit. So, yeah. Um, I think there's maybe smaller Titans characters that... You know, like Teen Titans in general. I mean, not, not Titans specifically. Like, yeah. Teen Titans characters have not been used in a long time. Or, like, I don't know. Like, um, yeah, Starfire. Starfire used to be like that for me, and then I found some stuff. 
Yeah, uh, like, she's yeah. a favorite. So a, a lot of these, though, are just like... I'm trying to think of specifically books that I'm not reading, haven't been reading yeah. for a long time, that I'm like, no, I, I, I wish I was reading that character in a... Yeah. Now, obviously, there's things that I wish I was reading right now, but yeah. <laughs> things that I've never really been reading, but I would love yeah. to. Uh, de- See, so, yeah, there's a lot of used to. So, like Deathstroke used to be there, but then I read a lot of the Priest Run. Yeah, you know, because I, I I always like Deathstroke as an idea, but his execution really never. It really depends on who's writing him, you know. Yeah, like, I, I would I would agree that the the Priest Run was enough to prove that no yeah. no you can do a I, interesting death. Uh, this is not so much that there's not been books to my liking. This is just more to do with a lack of books. But bizarrely, one of the question one of the answers I'd probably give to this is Shazam is Captain Marvel because Captain yeah. Marvel has not had a lot of books in a long time. No, he was always a you know part of JSA or like uh, the the Superman uh, short story not short story mini. For Thunder, which, which is part of which you is know, part of why I think yeah. it's great we have this new run by Johns that yeah. hopefully will last a while because he's finally got a book, he's finally got something that's yeah. dedicated to exploring him and his family. I give it yeah. twelve issues. <laughs> you think I'm joking? Connor's been a dick. Yeah. I mean, you might end up being right, but I hope you're not. I'm not saying that's yeah. an indication of its quality; it's just my expectations. Because well, obviously, Johns. I mean, not yeah. to say anything about the second issue, but. I was really big on that first issue. Yeah. Like, uh, I'm just it's just my expectations of of the market in this book. I don't think it'll last more than a year. I I wanted to go a long time. I want I I want. Oh, I want it to as well. Well, I don't know because if you if you look at the first uh, the first arc of his Green Lantern, it didn't feel like what it became. You know, like mm-hmm. it was very Earth based and and whatnot, and it didn't become that big huge spectacle until about 16 issues in so i i would like at know, least what he did on patience. aquaman in terms of length yeah. from new 52 get, get me about 30 issues and i'll yeah. be fairly yeah. pleased with that do, do you know, just to get back around to the the question a bit more what i think is almost the problem with this question mm-hmm. is yeah talking superman no 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 it's not, <laughs> not his, like, in terms of us trying to think of good answers is mm-hmm. that the ones the characters that we find interesting we find interesting because we've read good stories with them. Mm. There's a lot of characters who we go, eh, that's a pretty rubbish character. You know, well, we don't care about them because there's not any good stories. I think, that, that I think the bigger problem is what Matt said is that we, like, they're all used to us. I feel like there was a time yeah. when I was getting into comics where I probably had like 10 answers for this. Yeah. And I don't know yeah. if that's true anymore. No, because if there is a new, again, Starfire book, I'm going to check it out. Like, yeah. just based off, because that was a character I really enjoyed. In, in the small doses I got her in through Titans and and you know whatever other books she would pop up in. Still gonna rep um, that uh, solo book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Amanda Connor Palmiati one is so good. So good. Yeah, um, I, I think there's um like if there is our characters that fit into this for me, I just don't know about them yet. Like, they'll pop yeah. up. You know, I'll, like... I'll say um, Catwoman. I think I never really read a Catwoman book until this Joel mm. Jones one. Um, and and it it's it's really up or down, but I really feel like it's there's, there's a couple of big. Uh, I mean, I've not read them, but there's a couple of big runs you can buy of Catwoman. There yeah, is. The, yeah, the well, there's the Brubaker run. The one that got me into Catwoman was that uh, again. I've not read a lot of those big ones for for whatever reason. Uh, was the uh, the one at the end of the new Fifty Two by I think uh, Valentine mm. the writer? Yeah, that, that one was really good. Yeah, you got the Belen, you've got the uh, the, the Brubaker run. You, you you've got mm. runs to read of Catwoman if you wanted to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They're there. I'm just, I'm just, I'm trying to play ball here yeah. with with characters, but um, I mean, I suppose in a way, this current just see dark for me is kind of the 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 magic side of the universe that I've not typically yeah. been that interested in. But this is focusing it more into a horror book, so it's kind of making it work for me in a ways that it not. If you if you had to pick one, would it be maybe like I mean, Zatanna was probably the one you you'd probably have said you're the most interested in before. Um, I mean, I, th- I like Swamp Thing more, but Swamp Thing's got a lot of good material, whereas Zatanna probably fits this question better, because I like yeah. Zatanna, yeah. Yeah, but, there's, but there's not a ton of Zatanna content specifically, where I'm like, well, I like Zatanna well enough, but there's not a t- like, I've not read a ton of Zatanna on her own. Yeah. Um, and Man Bat's a weird one, because Man Bat is like, well, he was a villain before, he was fine just where he was, this is like a new take on him. Yeah, he's different. getting the clay face treatment. Yeah, yeah so, yeah, oh, that is, he is, isn't he? Yeah. Um, Zatanna's probably yeah, the answer for me actually Zatanna's probably the best thing yeah. I can think of yeah Hawkman was up until last year I really hadn't read any of it and he's kind of just like the the meathead of the JSA mm. like yeah, Holtman's not give him a mace 
and point him over there. Um, and I always just, I love the resurrection idea. I love him jumping through time. And then Vedini just took that and turned it to Run 11. With it. No, you yeah. that's a great answer. Because, you know, I was yeah. like, in theory, of like, I should really be into Hawkman. Like, you know, yep. great design. I like the reincarnation, the, the, the various versions. But it's always lacked something. I suppose yeah. a general answer and... for me is, because I've come more around to the idea since the early days, is probably the Legion in general. Not that there's not a lot of Legion comics that I'd probably yeah. like. I, yeah. I, if I go back and read Wade, if I go back and read five years later, I'm probably going to like those books. But yeah. I, I can promise you once once Supergirl shows up, you're you'd love it. Probably because it's <laughs> yeah it's a use of Supergirl that you like. Yeah. Um, so so and I'm sure I'm sure we'll we'll dive in at some point to some Legion. But when they announce a Legion book, me and Connor yeah. will do a monthly on a Legion yeah. volume one. Yeah. So it'll be interesting to see which one we come down on because there's a few different big Legion runs to pick from. Those are the two that I well, yeah. am well aware of, is the five years later, but they're just about to start reprinting as a trades and uh, the, the, the Mark Wade stuff from the 2000s. There's the... Um, the the second, where XS comes from. The, yeah. They were the, the reboot the, Legion. The Lannan uh, stuff, right? I think so, yeah. Uh, that went happened? through the 90s. You had Legionnaires and Legion. Mm. Yeah. Um, and then you had the, the Wade stuff, which... So... What's weird about that is a lot of that the 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 Abnet stuff plays off of the continuity of the original stuff too. That's where you get like the Great Darkness saga, and yeah. some of that has ripples throughout. So like they're always tied into one another, which is kind of cool because of you know timey wimey and whatnot. But you know um, they're all unique. In up until John's brought back the original, like I thought that I loved the the. The, the three boot that was the Wade and Kitson one because hmm. they were contemporized and it was kind of like the, these are teenage heroes you know they're not just like kids so it was it was really interesting but yeah I think it would be a case of we'd put up a poll for the patrons and let them vote on which of the the Legion versions they'd like to see as yeah well. Or which one's more re new reader friendly? Is someone who knows nothing about them? Is there one that's actually maybe more reliant on history? Yeah. That yeah. I maybe struggle with for a first time read. Uh, so another question. That's what, I guess this one's more of a game actually, and I, I like this. If people uh -oh. can think of a game for us to play as a question, I'm a okay, okay with that. Um, right. So at Corey YNWA wants us to do a Justice League draft, right? So I'll restrict this to five each to keep this quick. Okay. Because any more than that would take forever. Um. So the idea is we'll, we'll we'll make a we'll decide what the order is. We'll each pick a team member to build a team, um, and th I think he suggested putting a poll up for people to pick which one's the best team or something like that. I don't know, uh, but this sounds like funny to me. So uh, how do we decide order? Just rock paper scissors a few rounds of that maybe. That's yeah, because I'm going to number one pick. And if you guys take, yeah, you take my number one pick. I'm going to. Reach through. If you don't get to go first, Matt, you're gonna to have to accept that's a possibility. I'm just saying that the rock paper scissors is gonna roll really badly with the with the delay that we have between each other. <laughs> True. I don't. Know. What's the best way to decide this then? Random number generator. Pick, pick a number. Yeah, just do a random number generator. One to three. All right, I'm one. Matt's two. Connor's three. Right. Easy enough. Google has a one built in. Random number generator. Really? All right. Uh, between one and three. Generate number two. Matt's first, damn it. Uh, yes. And then second is cut. I'm last. Come on. Bullshit. You know I'm not cheating then because I'm goddamn last. Cut, cut. All right. Connor. What's your first pick, Matt? Yeah, I'm going Superman. <laughs> hey, come on. Shocking. Superman. I am shocked. Yeah. Look I'm, at me as I'm shocked. Number one overall pick. Like, he's the first. He's the best. Yeah. Okay. He's Connor, what's your, yeah. what's your first pick? I'm going Nightwing because who wants Batman? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm picking the Flash. My first pick. Damn you! <laughs> <laughs> well, because the Flash is what he is, I'm picking a second Flash for my <laughs> Justice League. So, which Flash are you taking, Pete? I'm taking Wally. You Barry or Wally? I'm taking Wally. Wally. I'll take Barry. You're it's taking Barry. Like Barry. All right. But... No flashes yeah. for you, Connor. <laughs> That's fine. I wasn't even thinking about you that. You say that, but he's adding impulse. <laughs> <laughs> well, he can do that. Yeah, sure. I could. That's possibility. Uh, uh, All right. Uh, no, I'm going to be interested in throwing Dr. Fate. 
Okay. More JSA, but cool. So, along with my Flash, my Wally West... I, I, to be honest, Matt, I assume just Eddie Hero was eligible here. Yeah, yeah. Yes, no, I know, but... Yeah. No, I know. So, going along with Wally West, I'm putting in Barbara Gordon as Batgirl. Of course you are. Mm-hmm. Of course you are. Yeah. Uh, uh, you just took mine. <laughs> um, that's what I was going to go with for my Bat character. Um, I'm going to go Starfire. Damn it, that was going to be my next one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I like her and Superman's relationship. So having them on the team and her looking up to him, I like that. So she's yeah. tight. Connor, hmm. I'm writing these down because I'm not going to remember them if I don't. <laughs> That's just a good point. <laughs> I've already forgotten half of them. Um, oh, it's just getting tricky, isn't it? Uh, mm. I'll take Martian Manhunter. Gotta have her. Uh, some, wow. some, some powers like that. You have an odd. You have an odd. Yeah, I'm trying to cover a few different bases. <laughs> what was your first Nightwing. one, Connor? Nightwing's clearly yeah. the leader. Nightwing, Fate. Na- yeah, Fate's the magic and the powerhouse. Oh, shit. Master Man to... for the other you know, powerhouse and then all the shapeshifting stuff. Yeah. Uh, what was your last one, Matt? Starfire. Starfire. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Superman, uh, Barry... Yeah. And right. Starfire. Uh, my third pick is Supergirl. Yeah, you had a super. That that's fine. Yeah, I've got and a flash of Supergirl and a bat there. I'm I'm doing good. And this is this is difficult. Uh, so I don't want Batman. <laughs> <I'm just> <laughs> um, I don't want Red Hood either. All the guns are taken. All my favorite Bat characters. There's other bad characters. There's good ones. Oh yeah, but you know, <laughs> I already have a Titan. I don't need Tim Drake. Um, shoot. <sighs> <laughs> I guess I need a lantern. So I'm gonna take Hal. I'm not gonna take Guy. Oh, shocking. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna take Hal because. No, actually, I'm gonna take guy. Give oh, me guy. I... <laughs> All right. I'm. I'm going to model NY Peter and 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 take Jessica Cruz. Oh, you're a dick. Yes. <laughs> Fine, that's okay. I'll Cause... take Kyle. I'll I'll take Kyle as my lantern. I'm okay with that. <laughs> I've got two ladies already. It's fine. I've got a nice balance here. Yeah. Matt, what's your last pick? So. I want a bat family member, and and it's the next best thing. Is I'm gonna take Black Canary, right? She's not a bat family oh, member, okay. but she right. fills that same niche. She's a, so, she's a bird, all right. Dana, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Connor, Wonder Woman. Oh, yeah, I was hoping none of you guys took her. Yeah, I was I was letting her for you. That's yeah. good. Now right, let me look at my team here. I've got Wally. I've got a speedster. I've got Babs, who arguably could be the leader. As the back character, we got Supergirl and we got Kale. What am I missing here? I've got you're, you're missing a distinctive leader. Yeah, <laughs> Wally and Kale are both. You have a straight up Titans team, Pete. W- Wally, Supergirl, and Kale are pretty. <laughs> this is what I'm saying. Legacy matters in DC. It's time for the old timers to piss off and die. <laughs> um, but you, I, I do need some so, someone who's a bit more of an elder. Let me think. jean has gone. Wonder Woman's gone. Obviously, Batman's a good pick, but I don't want to necessarily have two Bat characters, so I'm I'm, I'm veering yeah, away. Taylor Kitchen, Black Lightning. He's a teacher. <laughs> um, I could, I could. Um, I'm just, I'm looking, I'm looking. See, I, I want someone because I don't want a Flash. I've got a Flash. I've got a Bat. I've got a Super, and I've got a Green Lantern. So, is it? <laughs> Is it two Titans to just pick a, another Titan character? Yeah. It probably Dude, is. It probably is. Uh, this is Pete a pro- picks the corpse Pete, of Roy Pete, Harper. Pete could have Cyborg. <laughs> you do need a way to get around. <laughs> Green Lara can use a bubble to take people around. It's fine. Wally can run. It's, it's fine. It's straight up fine. Um, But I think I am going to go... Oh, screw it. I don't 
care. Stephanie Brown. Yeah, of course. I don't even care. Babs is the leader. Yeah. Babs is the leader. If Pete's team wins, I resign. I think I've got a good line up here. It's an ace even spread. I've got Speedster, I've got a Kryptonian and a Green Lantern. That's the powerhouses. And I've got two on-the-ground yeah. tacticians with, with tech and other stealthy It doesn't options. feel like a Justice League team, though. Yeah. It doesn't... Well, no, it's time for a new Justice League team. Um, I have I have a team that, that Superman's going to have to babysit, <laughs> essentially. And that's fine. That's where the that's where the stories come from. Because you got Guy being a, being a rogue. You got Canary just being like, what am I doing here? And then you have Barry and Superman and Starfire just being like, oh my god, what did we get in, into? But... <laughs> Yeah, this is a team I would read in a heartbeat. I'm pretty sure like, I'd read any of these teams. Although, Carlos yeah. is the worst, probably. How is mine the worst? <laughs> Defend that accusation. Because it's yours. Because Dr. Fate's on the team, and he's easily the weakest character of all these No, mentions. but you want... You want you might, but you got... Hey, this is you guys went for any magic. Nightwing? No, man, I read Connors in a heartbeat, too. Like, I still Pete, read I'm that. already basically reading yours. Yours is a Titans book. Like, yeah, like I mean, with... With Babs and, and Steph thrown in there, Supergirl's not never been in Titans, or at least not in a long time. Yeah, I mean she's she's been involved with the Titans before, and Kyle's only been Titans this time. Yeah, That's no, so back counts. in the nineties, man. Oh, he was, was it? On the team. Oh, fair yeah. enough. Okay, well, so, no, I believe in the legacy taking over, right? That's that's fine. And see, I like legacy mixed with right, and I think I got Starfire. I got Guy. Naturally, Guy counts as a legacy character. If if these three teams are all function at the same time, naturally Batman's the one who's kind of overseen all of them, right? That's why he's not been picked. Batman's over in the corner crying because he was last picked and <laughs> never happened to him. <laughs> oh. I feel you like everyone else... Yeah, that's what I mean. everyone else would have just taken Batman, right? Oh, I love Batman. This is not shit. I just didn't want to take him first because I was like, no, nah, I'm going to take some other ones that I care about that you might, guys may pick. And then I got to the end and I thought, I don't want Batman now. I feel like Batman doesn't fit now. You know, I, I really wanted a speedster and I, I could have gone with Jesse quick. And I didn't think about that after I took Barry. I, I, I debated having Jay, but I thought, now, now I'm going to JSA if I do that. In the same way that Pete's gone two Titans. You know, yeah. if I really wanted to make this interesting, I, I, we could have each had one thing at the end where we like steal someone from another team, just to be really dickish. But we're not going to do that. I've not thought about these rules in advance, so that, that'll take too long to think about. It. But I'm just pointing out that I thought of it. <laughs> yeah. So, so my my team from from one to five, I had uh, Superman, Barry, Starfire, uh, Guy, and and Dana. Dana, Canary. Yeah. Yeah. And Connor had Dick Connor Grayson, Scott. Dr. Fate, Martian Manhunter, Jessica Cruz, and Wonder Woman. What? That's what a great team. team. <laughs> what is that team? You've got some classic uh, leaguers, you've got some bad characters, you've got, I know, you know, that's you like, got that, you that, some That's a Gideo team. Strikes Again team. Like, How dare you? I'm just saying. That is Didio's worst nightmare. Dick, Dick uh, leading the Justice League? So I mean, he strikes again. Something yeah. happened, and it caused <laughs> such a shakeup. You know, like when when um, I think it was Nightwing. Was he Batman at that point? But he had his whole Justice League run with James Robinson. Yeah, and that was a weird book. Um, anyway, yeah. let's move on to some other questions. Uh, let's do three quicker ones, right? Let's just do some rapid fiery, right? Uh, at McComb Factor or at Comb Factor. Sorry, this is the full name is the the McComb Factor. At, Mc, at, at Comb Factor. Who will recover from amnesia first? Arthur, a.k.a. Andy, Aruzio, Curry, or Dick, Rick, Grayson? <laughs> Who's first? Well, judging off of the events of this week's Aquaman, I'm going to go with Aruzio yes. slash Andy. I'd, yeah. I'd say Aquaman as well. I think he recovers his memories pretty quickly, but chooses yeah. not to become Aquaman again immediately. Yeah, yep. I can see that. I can see that. All right. Uh, at Struon, which DC characters do you think would make a surprisingly good couple? Or work well as a couple. Who are you like, shipping? Do they mean like romantically or like romantically? I think it's romantically. Yeah. Or partners. Okay. Um. Uh, I don't know. I don't really ship a lot of. I, I don't stuff, either. But so. if I'm thinking of something on the spot, here's an interesting combination for you: Bart Allen and Cassandra Cain. Huh? Oh man, I don't know about that. She might like <laughs> just snap on him. He talks enough like, for both of them. It's perfect. <laughs> 
Yeah, but she needs silence, bro. <laughs> like she needs time to do her ballet and to think. Like, in Bart. Uh, it's not so much a ship, but I always love the idea of, of of John having a crush on on Starfire. Like, um, John Kent. But you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Okay. I'm not John Stewart. You know. Um, <laughs> I'm really glad you because that's who I was yeah. thinking of. I was like, yeah, no, John. Just because he's he's at that age, right? It's where, like, like the older babysitter. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and he's just kind of like her. She makes me feel <laughs> yeah, weird. Yeah, if your older babysitter uh, was a supermodel alien from another. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And yeah, how, but how I much, imagine. Like... It, hey, in his life, that sounds about right. <laughs> okay, sure. Yeah, I mean, his mom's a reporter, but looks like a model. So, like, you know. <clears throat> um, but yeah, I always like that idea. I, I always try to put Supergirl with somebody, but it never. Never really works out. No one's good you know? enough. It's basically that simple. No, not, not for Kara. <laughs> um, so Kara's a weird one because obviously you have to go. On, okay, what age is she supposed yeah, to no. be? Version. Then, then again, we we me and Pete did you know workshop this of of Billy and Kara, like having a having a thing. Hmm. Um, you know, and and Shazam looking like a creep because he's seen with Supergirl, but nobody knows he's a sixteen year old kid. Yeah, you know. Yeah, I can see the fun in that. Yeah, yeah. that's amusement to be had there. Um, all right, so finally, this is the best question of the week. If DC acquired rights to Joss Whedon's hit television show Buffy the Vampire Slayer, which team would the Slayer be on? <laughs> I mean, I have an obvious answer, and then a, a, can, and then how I really yeah, feel the, about this. The can obvious I get Corey's follow up to that question. I did, I'll, I'll get to that in a bit. Let's answer the question first. So the obvious answer is just sleep dark because Buffy deals with mystical and yeah, you know, know. mythical yeah. creatures, she's, right? That's the obvious one. She, she's she's a teen first though, like. So you're thinking a Titans like, team? So, uh, uh, she's on yeah. the Teen Titans. I can see that's that. It. She's, I, I think yeah, she's the Tracy Thirteen magic ish character. I, I find know, it something. hard to to take this question even semi seriously because Marvel do this where they take they acquire something and they mm -hmm. put it in like Conan's going to be in in the main universe, right? I yeah. hate this. I hate with a passion. Well, Angela. That's, that's Angela's related yeah. to Thor now. I, I wouldn't yeah, necessarily so say I would like this. I'm just, I mean, if I'm no, asking no, the question. I, I, I don't even want to what think if. about that. Like, acquire the license, sure. Do then something again, with though, it. Like, look at the history of DC and that's all their characters came from. Yeah, right? but they're all other comic companies that they get them from. Yeah. Not, like, yeah. Here's not the, other properties. Yeah, but that media. was... Yeah, but like... What other media would they adapt from back then? Like it's kind of the same thing. Like no, no, this so, thing. I have no problem with it's within the same media and a uh, medium, yeah. and it's an acquisition like that. That doesn't bother me too much. It's when they take it from something else entirely. But Buffy's but, probably close to having more comic issues than she does TV episodes at this point. So probably, you know. but I mean um, that's not the point. That doesn't that doesn't make it make her a comic also character. final pick. And I actually might like this one the most. She leads a new Birds of Prey. That focuses on I vampires. She needs to lead. I, I don't know if she needs to lead. I feel like she's the canary field up still. You know what I mean? Okay. Like, because she she did always have Giles and whatnot. Like I, I'm yeah, using true. her in early phase, not late phase. Slayer. You know? Okay, if, if it's early phase, then she's not the leader. But yeah. she she's with yeah. like Huntress and they're hunting vampires yeah. and shit. Because that's one thing that DC doesn't have as much. Because because Marvel have got Blade and they've got Morbius. They've got like some bigger yeah. profile vampire esque things. DC doesn't have. They had Eye Vampire. Yeah. Yeah. Right? But that's definitely smaller than Blade in terms of, yeah. of you know yeah. recognition. Better though. <laughs> I I actually don't give a shit about either, so I mean I really don't want to get into this fight. I, really like that I like I people. love Blade as a character. I just don't need to read him. Like, you know what's funny? Going that, back that, to that, that first, first question, question would have yeah. been much easier with Marvel characters. I was gonna just want to say yeah. that it would have. I was thinking yeah. at the time that like, I could do this all day for Marvel. Yeah. Yeah. Like, um, Fisto Kanchu, what's his name? The Moon Knight. Mm. Great idea. Don't even, care even a Lemire book wasn't enough to get me to try that. Nope. Or the uh, Warren Ellis one that was meant to be really good. Like, I may try anyways. that. I never ever get around to it, but I'm. Yeah. I'm not. But opposed. yeah, definitely. I, I I mean, I would read Buffy on really any of those teams. So yeah. Um, I, I I like Buffy. I I don't have the infatuation that that Pete does. I think no one has the infatuation that Pete does. I I no. think um. Maybe a more interesting question would be where do you put Faith or where do you put, you know, like some of the other characters? Oh, we're not getting Faith into on that. Suicide Squad. <laughs> <laughs> She's got a bomb in her neck. 
She's not five by five anymore. Oh no, that's Spike with a chip. You know, solely Spike with a chip well, is Suicide Squad, right? Yeah, well, you put both of them on there. Yeah, I'll go with that. Yeah. Um, um, for, yeah. for more on Buffy, you can catch the next episodes of Elsewhere in the Multiverse, so, where yeah. we will be talking about the new issue. Yeah, Buffy the Vampire so, issue one is I, it was out this week. I want talk about it. A, I want a Giles and Alfred adventure. Oh, I can see that. <laughs> like that. Give me that book over any of do these. What, do you know what is 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 potentially good about that? You can even do the flashbacks to their respective youths. Mm. Yep, because they've both got like yeah some alternative things there. Yeah, going on. yeah, military and actor slash, and then for Giles the Ripper stuff with the magic and uh-huh. yeah, you, yeah, you could do that. You could talk that. I mean, even forget bringing Buffy into it. I, I, you'd almost make me want to see Alfred as kind of the Giles to a team now, like you know a younger team. Yeah, like have him be the Giles to. The younger back Why girls hasn't or anyone done that? Yeah, that's a I good idea. Because he kind right, of let's cut this out. a lot of the Bat family like that anyway. Yeah. No, he does. I can Guys, see cut this out. Thing. We're, we're going to work on a pitch. Yeah, let's pitch this to DC. I can do it. Yeah. Um, so, no. So, as, as Connor said, though, our other comic show that me and Connor do elsewhere in the multiverse where we do Marvel and indie books, we're doing Buffy the Vampire Slayer issue one this coming episode. That'll be out on Wednesday. So, look forward to that. That will finally take us on, though, to the books this week. We can start talking about the actual issues. And this is fun for Connor, because he gets to sit at the very first one. <laughs> I will leave you to it. <laughs> because Ben is, is involved. So, this is Naomi issue one, with Brian Michael Bendis and David F. Walker co-writing, with Jamal Campbell on the art. This is a completely new character, so this is kind of unique, actually, because usually when we do a new issue one, we know who the character is. We have, like, mm-hmm. no, it's, it's, it's a Shazam book. It's a... It's a Justice League book. It's Catwoman. Yeah. 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 So uh, he's. I want him to hear this because <laughs> this this is a book that if Bendis wasn't attached to, he would love it. I feel Connor would be all about. I can see that. Because my here my my main takeaway from this is if Superman hadn't been such a central figure, you could swap him with like generic superhero, mm-hmm. and this works as an independent book that I still want to read. Yeah, it totally like, could, yeah. Oh, it's so good. I, I liked it a lot as well. Um, it's basically this small town and Superman happens to be fighting. Was it Mongol at the start? Yeah, Mongol. Um, and, you know, the, the fight apparently spilled into the street in this small town as they were flying mm-hmm. through the country. And they were there for something like 15 seconds. And that's all it was. 15 seconds yeah. of punching and then they, Here and they, gone. they flew off and fought elsewhere. And Naomi, the main character, missed it. And she feels left out because everyone else saw this, at least parts of it. Yeah and she feels left out and the the, the way that the, the book works is she, she, has, she has therapy and she's talking she's she's uh, she was adopted and yep. it's basically the, the therapist ties it into this idea that there's a superman complex that orphans have where or adopted children have where they have this belief or this hope that because superman's kind of this idyllic dream where not only did he have loving parents and not that everyone publicly knows that necessarily but he grew up and eventually realized that he was special. He realized mm-hmm. that, hey, I, I can be more than this. I have superpowers. I can be important. And everyone will respect me and love me because... Yeah, the, have... there's a reason why I, you know, had the life that I had. Yeah. Everything happens. Uh, there's a sense of destiny. Yeah. And, and it's this and idea sh- that as an adopted kid, she doesn't feel that. Mm-hmm. She, she, she wants to feel special. Yeah. She wants to feel like it was all important or worth something. But... You know, she doesn't necessarily get and this isn't probably a normal thing that adopted kids feel is like you know did i come from somewhere important will i ever find out yada 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 and she kind of investigates there's some interview segments the bit where she's interviewing various people or friends teachers that kind of thing um and they're basically and it's really well written it's got a really good fun flow to it but she interviews this this or she goes and talks to this mechanic and because everyone keeps like she hears like one thing from a friend that's like oh there was a superhero here once before like you know like 17 years ago and mm-hmm. no one will tell her about it. All the adults act as if it's like a myth. It, it was very Elm Street, right? Yeah. Where like, we, we, we don't talk about this. The kids come and talk about it. We deflect as much as we can. Yeah. Uh, and, and one of the things I really like too is you get a sense of camaraderie. And you could say it's a little bit overwritten in that Benda style. Mm-hmm. But I, I feel like just the way the characters interact, you get a feel of them. Because... And it's weird because, again, I don't feel like it's overwritten, but I would get how someone would say that. But, like, when, when her one friend, I think it is, is it Annabelle, what's her friend's name? The gothy one? Not the gothy one, the one with, like, the pinkish hair. Right, okay. Oh, shit. Yeah, the one she's going to sleep over with, yeah. Yeah, 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 the one whose mom said stuff. 
you just I, I know that character. Like it's <laughs> I've seen her in TV shows and in movies and like the voice is there. Um Yeah. And the the final hook of the book <laughs> that rhymed, didn't even mean that. The final hook of the book is that when she's talking to this mechanic, he actually eventually admits that no, there was something here, something happened on this date. Mm-hmm. And then she turns around and goes, wait a minute, that's the day I was adopted, and that's a cliffhanger. Obviously, this search, which... And the funny thing is, is obviously this is implying that maybe there is something special about her, that there's something mm-hmm. important about her where she came from. I can almost see this book going down a path where she isn't special, that's not the point of this. Yeah. Um. Although, Ben just was teasing this week that this this book is actually hiding one of DC's biggest mysteries that's going to like do a lot yeah. of stuff. Well, so, also in the solicit, it's a, bit, it's a bit of spoiler, something might involve the multiverse mm. with, with that she uncovers. And so I could feel like her drive to be special doesn't necessarily mean that she is, but the fact that she's looking for it actively shows... A, a kind of specialness she'll, she'll, you know she'll, yeah she'll become special because of how she seeks things out not because yeah she's, she's special it's almost where, yeah she wants to be superman but she's gonna end up being like a lois lane type you know where she has her own strengths and can do just amount of, as good but without you know yeah all of that and, and oh man and i wouldn't hate it if the if it turns out no. she is from a meta or an alien and she does have powers or whatever like that yeah. wouldn't bother me if that's the way it goes but i can see them going down the path of no she isn't special but she is special kind of thing yeah. <laughs> like you know like i can see them doing that yeah. uh art's very good uh jamal walker's mm-hmm. uh or jamal campbell sorry uh, his art well, is yeah. very very good uh, it's david f walker that's why i mixed our names up <laughs> i know I get you. yeah um that's that scene where so they, they talk about how Superman came through and he didn't even clean up, which mm-hmm. that's one of my big things that, that they could have fixed Man of Steel with is if, if you show a little blip at the end of the movie of him coming back to Metropolis to help clean up his mess. Yeah. And it's, it's a comedy right? beat here because she misses yeah. him again. He comes back to help yep. clean up and she gets there too late when she hears he's oh. here and it's like, ah, sorry. And you never <laughs> get a good look at Superman. Oh, like, yeah. That's my favorite thing uh, about the art, is because obviously yep. the first time he was fighting Mongol is fine because we don't see him properly anyway. But when he comes right. back, he's always at a distance. You never get a clear look at his face. No, nope. but there's that close up of that smile, right? Yeah, but he's in when the he shadow, comes right? Cena. Yeah, well, yeah. So his his back's to the crowd, and then it, it there's like a zoom into his smile, um, and then it goes back out. Yeah, it's over right? the shoulder. It's like you just see his yeah. mouth and nothing else. Yeah. It and is, it's it, I, it's hiding his face and it makes it feel yeah. like we never quite get a good look at him kind of like naomi yeah he's a myth yeah well, not a myth a legend like and and you don't get that too much because we get you know we have, we have two books that focus on superman that bendis is writing and we're in his head and here he is not even a side character and so to be able to pull that off like to me, that just shows the, the, the skill that Ben has. Yeah, Joe, Joe, you know? the two pages later I really like is the, the, the really wide panels and it's the sunset and mm-hmm. as, the, as she's talking to her yeah. friends and that's when she learns about this other thing that happened. Yeah. Um, the sunset behind them is beautiful. The way it's, yep, you know, the colors. They, yeah, it's just it's great coloring on that mm-hmm. page. Uh, I really, really like it. Um, it's great, very expressive art as well. Like Naomi has a lot of annoyed faces she pulls when people won't yep. give her information. Uh, it's really good. In fact, the page where she's just standing with her hands in her pockets, it's after the interview page after that two-page layout. Mm. And she's just kind of st- standing there, and she looks really angry. She's sort of looking down the street at people, like, who can I interview? Yeah. Who can I Who can I question? Uh, I just yeah. really like that. It's really good stuff. Um, um, I, I also love the idea, like, something that, whatever had happened, like, they're all covering up that it's a weather balloon and whatnot, and, like, you get the sense that these superheroes are celebrities, which, again, doesn't really get touched on in the books that we normally read because her friend's like, yeah, mom said if a superhero showed up here 20 years ago, she would have ran off of him. Like, mm-hmm. and it didn't matter who it was. She goes, Booster Gold, Blue Devil, yeah, yeah. She'd, she'd be out of here. And that's and, aiming low in the superhero he, pool. <laughs> no, it is. As much as I love Booster, like, he is a joke. So just the fact, like, it feels like there's a, a, a pop culture around the superheroes, too, yeah. which which is our life, too. Like, yeah. I, I really like that stuff. I like that this, you know, this town is boring because it never gets the superhero fights. But, you know, Metropolis and Gotham and, you know, whatever, yeah. they all do all the time. Co City and, yeah. and everything. Like but, all these ones that we recognize. And then this, this town's called Puerto Suigo. And I tried to look it up to see if it was a real city. And there's a Puerto Suigo in New York. But I don't know if this is meant to be the same doesn't one. It seem like it, but I mean. No. Um, but I, I was curious okay. to see if he based it off because he does that sometimes with like 
places in Oregon and whatnot. Yeah. Uh, or Ohio. So, but it's it's very much middle America, anywheresville. Kind of, you could say Smallville, USA. Yeah, pretty much. You know? Um, so, and this is her Smallville. If, if she does become special, yeah. this is her Smallville. Um, exactly. I liked it. I liked it so much that I'm probably going to go back and get this physically and buy this yeah, physically going I, forward. So, so I got this physically at my shop to get the Lupacino cover because mm-hmm. I just love that cover so much. And I was like, you know, I don't have room for new books, but I love this first issue so much that this is definitely on the poll going forward. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, so curse you, Bendis. <laughs> for this and Young Justice, after I swore no more new books. Yes, uh, he's 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 hitting it out. Um, I really like this. This this is arguably a better first issue than Young Justice as well. I think. Oh, easy. Yeah. And it, and then again, I feel it plays to his strengths because it, it's all a new character. It's playing in a in a world that's not exactly his, but like it's just very exciting. And again, I, I was getting vibes of like Nailbiter. Like not that they're the same tone at all. But it felt like something new. Yeah. Playing with familiar things. I will. I will say if if obviously we think she may not become special in in the yeah. in the sense that she thinks she thinks if she does though I could totally see the book like ending and relaunching with a new name like if she gets yeah. like a name like a hero name. Well, and I just love that the she is as normal as can be, right? And she has her own book, and that it's just her name. Like I remember when this got announced, it was like, well, what's Naomi? Like, what's this book yeah. gonna be? And and but, yeah, it just it's all it's playing to everything. Like I loved it so much, and I like that because it's, it's nice to get this perspective for a change mm-hmm. in a world of superheroes. It's nice to be on the ground yep. with normal people, uh, mm-hmm. for for a change. So, yeah, uh, you know, it made me laugh a few times. The art's gorgeous. It's hard to fault it, Matt. What are you giving yep. Naomi issue one? Nine point five. Whoa. Okay. Swinging for the fences. I'm going to I'm going to mute that slightly and go with a nine. But I thought it was yeah. great. I'm looking forward to issue two. Um, it's on the physical pull list, which is, I mean, that that'll probably go up is over time. Like when a new Batman run starts, I'll probably switch to physical for it, but not yeah. now. I'm not, I'm not I'm not switching to digital uh, physical sixty plus issues in. It's not happening. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, cool. All right, that'll take us on. Speaking of Batman, actually, that'll take us on to Batman issue sixty three. Tom King writing, Mikel Janin on the art. Uh, this is Nightmares Part Three. Uh, so this is we're definitely in a dream world. It's kind of acknowledging that this is a if they actually got married kind of issue. We see Batman and Selina together. Um, Constantine's kind of narrating and then kind of pops in, and it's not really Constantine as. And what I will say about this issue is I like that they ad- they, they reference the last two and address the fact that he's kind of becoming aware that he's not. This is none of this is real. Like he's in some sort right. of dream state or device or something. Uh, nightmare gas. From, yeah. From- from uh, Scarecrow. That's what Constantine um, said. I don't know if I believe him, but... <laughs> I don't either. Yeah. But the fact that it's coming from him and, and, and King wants us to to focus on that, you know what I mean, at this point. I just... Here's the thing, and I, I'm, I'm definitely overthinking it. So if, if Constantine's show, showing up in the dream, what what's the use of his narration? Is he telling that to Batman before, what his dream was? Or is he the omniscient narrator that's telling us... I, I think part of the problem is he's not there, is he, though? No. I, I, that, that, so where's that never, coming from? Constantine's nothing to do with My impression was it's 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 Bruce's subconscious manifesting uh-huh. as Constantine. Right. So where does Constantine's narration boxes come in, though? That's a fair question. Because if, if it's not Constantine and he's not telling us this, how would Bruce know that? Why would Bruce go there to think about that? You know, because I'm sure him and Constantine aren't meeting up at the Bl- uh, Oblivion Bar, you know, and he's telling him about James he had about his dead mom. Yeah. So I, w- I wonder if there's going to be more to the. Obviously, it's it's acknowledging that obviously this stuff isn't real and they're in his head in some mm-hmm. capacity. I wonder if there is some element to this where uh, there is some real stuff, like maybe like Constantine's trying to break into his head, and that's why maybe like there is some real narration from him. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Um. The obvious thing to mention here is how good the art is. Uh, yeah. Yeah, and typically does a good I, job. So I actually nice. don't think... I think it's far from Jan's best work, actually. I think it's kind of stilted. It, so to me... Well, to me, I think it plays into the, the storyline because it, it feels a little bit off. Like, it's Janin, but it's, like Connor said, it's a little bit stilted, but I feel this by design. Like, I don't feel like he just, you know, phoned it I in. I mean, maybe, but I, I, I definitely enjoyed the art less than I usually do when he's on, on a book. Um, now, was it a different colorist? 
Um, I don't think so. Yeah, I mean, looks pretty great. I think his two face looks a bit weaker, but yeah, I don't know. It just didn't have the flow that I usually expect from him. Like I said, it felt stilted, but well, there's a lot of one page scenes, and it, it goes through a lot of things very quickly. I, I don't think there's the the chance for it to yeah. have that much flow in each scene. Uh, it's not that type of issue uh, by any stretch. Um, no, nah, I was still into the art quite a bit. Um, but yeah, it's, it's basically just you know Batman being in his dream, mm -hmm. and you know he's with Catwoman, but eventually you know Catwoman is going to die, so it's kind of like. <laughs> Giving him the dream, but then, you know, giving it this traumatic ending. Yeah, but see, unlike that issue with Superman where they always bring that up with Lois, like, one day Lois mm. is going to die and you're going to look like you're 40, you know? With Batman, it's like, well, he can die at any time, too. So, like, that that felt like a little... Like, I get what he was going for, but it still felt a little hollow with, like, like well, yeah, I don't know what you guys are getting into. It probably speaks more to Batman's fear that being associated with him is going to be more likely to lead to her death, perhaps. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's, it's hard yeah, to, if it was to really Alfred, buy into that like, when, when she's running around dressed as a cat. Yeah. 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 Like, if that, was, if that was Alfred or even, you know, like, like we saw in Tech, um, the Doctor. I'm, I'm John Tompkins. Like, um, Tompkins. Sure. I, that, that I could see because they're... They're there to support Bruce, not Batman, where I feel like a lot of the cat and bat stuff is based around Batman himself. And so like Connor said, it's it's hard to it's like with Dick. I didn't like seeing Dick get shot and I don't like what it's brought, but like that's part of being a superhero, you know? Like so for that to weigh on Bruce, I just eh, it's a little bit different, I feel. So Matt was cutting out a little bit there, but I mean we got the gist of what you say. Yeah. The yeah. <laughs> skate being Matt, don't worry about it. <laughs> I'm I'm very ready for this arc to be over, and the fact that I know I have to wait till May yeah. to get you've, you've got four more. You've, you've, well, you're taking a break now because February yeah, is the yeah. crossover. But then yeah, yeah. that's great. I get some March art. <laughs> yeah, but now we get some Williamson. So yeah, yeah, yeah I'm, change I'm, pace. I'm much more excited for these issues in terms of story than I am for. Yeah, the next few I months. Was, I was hoping that, you know, like, and I'm still hoping this for the next ones. Uh, this one did inch towards, like, okay, we're getting a more of a context of what's going on here. Um, yeah. But it wasn't maybe enough to, like, make me hook me in and go, okay, I'm liking what he's doing here now. Yeah, and I think, yes. like Matt says, it's, there's too many problems with, like, why is there this huge, like, two pages full of Constantine narration. And I mean full yeah. of yeah. Constantine narration. If Constantine's not there, it just feels like it's there for the sake of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I, I agree with that. The Constantine narration was um, weird. But, um, yeah, I just, I do like that it's peeling back pieces and whatnot, but, like, I, and I appreciate the fact that King is taking chances in, in Batman, because, like, there was that whole Penguin issue that was just that, that poem, you That's know, right, yeah. pulled, pulled out, and now there's this, and he's, And I think that one you worked, know, worked better, for, for the record. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just saying, like, he's, he's taking these risks I think... at a weird time i'm i'm a know? lot more willing to forgive the risk of oh it's one issue if it didn't work out this is like a you know eight issue arc or whatever it is seven issue arc. Seven, yeah uh, but i still feel like once it's all said and done we'll have it clear i feel like 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 that that issue of of snyder's batman where you know you didn't know what page to turn and whatnot remember how, oh, yeah. how weird that oh, was like five yeah but that was just one issue and it was kind of fun I feel like in hindsight, we're going to look back at this one and be like, oh, okay. Yeah. You know, I have I a little bit more faith hindsight in for that one. Yeah. No, no, no. I'm just saying, like, with this one, it's, it's a little bit different. You know, like, Snyder was definitely taking a risk mm. at, I, at that issue. So. Yeah. I mean, I, if nothing else, these Nightmares issues have been kind of showcases for different artists because obviously we had the really good Garrett's art last issue. Um, yeah. You know, like, like, I feel like that's going to be the, the consistent thing here because we've got an Amanda Connor one coming up, I think. Uh, yes, that was in 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 April. I think they were yeah. solicits. So, like you know, we have different artists basically showcasing these different things. Um, and it almost would have been better if that those first couple of pages just had no narration. It was just you know, here's the full page yeah. spreads of them on their honeymoon. Like just here's the yeah. moment and just leave it at that. But uh, yeah. kind of murky. That this arc has definitely been murky. Uh, in terms of like you know, there's things I like in it, but there's you know, there's this weird sense of like I'm I'm finding a lack of direction here, and I think that's fine to a point. Uh, it just it feels kind of weird here. Yeah, I don't really feel like he's going for that David Lynch vibe, but David Lynch is really good at that, right? Mm. Where it's this etherealness and nothing makes sense because it's dream logic. 
but it makes sense to him. I don't get that with King, you know, and I'm sure it does, but it's not being conveyed like it yeah, is. Yeah, I wonder if that's the point of the Constantine narration of like, yeah. oh, it doesn't make sense. It's supposed to feel like, but it just feels stupid. Yeah, that's all right. Well, that's how I feel about most Lynch stuff. So I don't watch it. Like, ah, uh, no, 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 no. That's easy. Hey, again, it's taste. I'm not doing this again. It's fine. <laughs> A joy is is weird as well. If Constantine's not there, why do we have like an entire scene? Like, yeah, yeah. The, the whole thing with it with a dream, right? Is is it's all you're always there. You're following yourself. Mm-hmm. Like you know, when when Constantine's going up the lift, you know, talking to the guy, and he's like, "Don't worry, I'm not even here." Yeah. There's again, there's stuff that just doesn't. Uh, but yeah, which that. implies that it's not a tr- dream in the, the the traditional sense. That there's maybe more to this. I don't know. It ju- it just seems weird that if this is Bruce's experience, which is the assumption we're working under, yeah, that we don't see Catwoman being shot, but we we're with John going up a lift. Like what? No, I get not seeing Catwoman be shot because I don't think Batman saw that either. I I think the point okay. there. Fine, okay, if it's dream logic and it cuts to it's happened, yeah. right? But it still doesn't explain to me the lead into that scene. Well, that's what I'm saying. Maybe there's more that will make this feel better later. It, just purely because it does feel weird to cut away from that if, if this is just all Batman's POV. Like, it feels like it should be. But yeah. I mean, the first one wasn't Batman's POV. But the first one was mostly other people talking to the kids, you know, talking to, to you know, Master Wayne. Uh, I, I yeah. assume, to be honest, in, you know, in, in, in looking back at that, as mm. in my assumption was how in the second issue that that Pig turned out to be Damien, I assumed that Master Wayne was actually kind of him, like he he was in that mindset okay. thinking he was that kid. I can see that. Yeah, I can see that. See, but see, it's getting us talking about the the previous issues now, like and what they all mean, and I think that's that's kind of brilliant on King's part. Yeah, I mean, maybe by the time we get to the seventh one, we'll be looking back at some of these other ones with a whole new light and saying, yeah. okay, this is maybe what makes more sense now. It's weird for, a, like, a monthly or a twice-a-month book to... Yeah. To, to, you know, we do issue by issue, but... Uh, yeah, we'll see. We'll see. We, we give it a map. We've written it. Oh, it's a seven. Like, the art, art are strong, but again, the story, I'm not mm. feeling as much. But, yeah. Connor? Yeah, I'm not feeling it still, so I'm gonna go with a four. Yeah, I. Uh... Yeah, I'll go with a six. I, I, I feel like I, I just I couldn't quite get into the story of this one as as much. Mm. Um, as much as like we had obviously some similar, some similar problems with the, the pig one, I still feel like I was more into just what was happening in the moment with that one. Yeah. Um. So. It's fair. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, that all takes on to Justice League number 16, Scott Snyder and James Tyne in the fourth, co-writing with Jim Chung and Steven Segovia on art. So, we didn't, have, we didn't start with Starman this time, we just had that stuff at the end, because they, they kind of intersect yep. with the main plot. Uh, but we're on Thagar mm-hmm. Prime Stuff, is the end of this arc, and it's mainly an exposition issue with uh, the Martian Keep. Uh, yep. Yeah. Telling Jean tons of stuff. <laughs> but, I liked a lot of what that exposition was saying in the grand scheme of the DCU. Um, Mm -hmm. And I feel like if you look up other cultures and their creation myths, it's not outside. uh, Nothing ever comes from nothing, right? Like there's always something before. And so the fact that that's where, where Snyder and Tynan are going here to where, what existed before what we know is the DCU. I like all of that. Yeah. I like all of that stuff as well. I dislike all the stuff with Jean. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm also sure I like the idea that he was kind yeah. of saved because he was special. <laughs> Some, yeah. I, and forgive me if I'm wrong. Like, wasn't he brought over as an adult? Right? Is is he meant to? Because he looks an awful lot like a kid in that. In that panel, um, yeah. In I, I assumed he was a kid there and then he went back because they, they talk about time travel stuff, right? Mm. In that section. So I assumed that that happened yeah. to him while he was a kid, and then they put him back on Mars for, for whatever reason. I, I don't know. Yeah. So that's where I don't, I I don't like that stuff yeah. at all. So yeah. So he was kidnapped as a kid. They used his DNA to make these monsters, and then presumably he ended up back at Mars. Um, yeah. And it's like, oh, that's why you survived because your time and your the, 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 they're meddling. You didn't die like everyone else did on Mars. And I was like, eh, I don't know. It just it feels like it's retconning in this reason and. I hate when they rec- like 
one of my biggest pet peeves actually with storytelling whether it be comics tv shows or whatever i hate when they try and retcon new things into the backstory later like yeah especially when it comes to villains which isn't necessarily the case here although it maybe kind of is depending on who abducted them and what they're going to do with that but is like if you're going to build a new villain just build a new villain have the villain become a threat in present day and build it from scratch from the yeah. ground up this trying to retcon things into the past to make it almost almost to like give it a kickstart where there's already history so that you already have to care about it. It doesn't work. It never works for me. Like, but no, I, because like I feel like when Johns pulls it off when they, they call him the Jeff Con, mm-hmm. right? When when he does it though, it is an actual point in that character's history where things can be changed, right? It, it's kind of his his theory on time travel and, and booster gold is there are points that are calcified that you can't change no matter what you do, but there are other points that you can go and mold to, to what you can be. And and that's fine, but here I just feel like they're taking a jackhammer to yeah, I, to the calcified parts. Yeah, I think there's a, there's a fine line for me with the retconning where there's a lot of things where I'm happy to see change here or there, whatever, you know, oh, mm-hmm. you know we'll, we'll put that in. Mm-hmm. It's when it's a character that, oh, they need to be essential to be, oh, you know, save the universe, but there has to be something in their past yeah to do it yeah it just feels like that's the type of retcon i'm not that into yeah and this is one of them um, I, I will say i do like the idea that they're setting up here at least this is how i read it that there's justice and there's doom on opposing sides and that john is going to have to be the balance yeah he's in between both because obviously I, lex read it as just doom is the the, the primary it, thing and it's not there's, there's, right. there's both no. and the source wall kind of helped keep the, the doom out <laughs> and the justice in right but it has to be rebalanced and john's gonna john's gonna have to be a big part of that yeah uh, yeah that, that's fine like i'm okay with that yeah. i thought um was it, did i rewrite in that the idea that that humans and martians were once the same species yeah. and they were like split apart and, and it was yeah. it kind of sounds like okay you can tie this scientifically as a as a common ancestor uh, but th- this is going at a more uh, like a the, yeah. the faith-based angle i, I guess it is like they were the same species. i ever necessarily read it scientifically as the same species it was just because no. they said what did they say um the, similar aspects yeah the, they're the, saying they split them apart didn't they yeah the the the, 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 the physical like, special abilities went to the martians but the what was it went to the humans again the it, fire it the physical fire the passion the passion yeah yeah because yeah. i knew it wasn't the tells because it's not like martians already it's not, it's not quite intelligent no no i thought it was, it was yeah. very a key use of fire because martians are obviously yeah, afraid yeah, yeah. of it yeah um, so, so they fire. fear fire um i mean there's some interesting stuff in here i i do think the issue is a bit much of an exposition dump though yeah, yeah i agree like, those entire pages of that that martian yeah. keep just with these giant thought bubbles yeah. or speech bubbles rather uh, I, I did love the Green Lantern versus the Thanagar stuff because that's like prime ran Thanagar yeah, war. Yeah, it turns out uh, that that actually is Killer Rock. That actually is yeah. the core. And, yeah. and I love him talking shit to John. I was like, hey, next time you go do this, that's what we're here for. Like, call for backup, man. Like, yeah, don't e- do it even yourself. later when uh, uh, Shera actually like makes more like yeah. Thanagar warriors, uh, like John, I hate you right now. <laughs> yeah. I hate you so much. <laughs> so good. I love Wog. <laughs> Um, and also the, the, the stuff with there with with uh, Shira and uh, Kendra, and how whatever is going on split them for whatever reason, and that the aspect that is supposed to return and be reincarnated stayed with Shira when it should have been passed to Kendra. Yeah. So now Kendra's also more whole. I, I like that because it's playing with what we're getting in Hawkman. Yeah, I was okay and, with that. Yeah, I'm okay with you know, that. So so that that was all cool. Yeah, uh, but yeah, there, there's a lot of stuff I liked in here, uh, especially when when Starman shows up, and is like, yeah, I like Deus Ex Machina Man. Yeah, like, someone actually pointed out uh, the panel at the bottom of the page. Uh, it says mm-hmm. there are many broken things in the universe. It's time we started fixing them. Uh, being hopeful that that was talking about a lot of other things that we need fixing, <laughs> and I don't think it necessarily yeah. is, but you know, you never know. No, yeah. I thought the the art switch was a lot more jarring this issue. I agree. Technic- yes. Technically, yes, it's still the Starman section, but it's it's in the same place with with Hot Girl and, yeah. and everyone else. It didn't work yeah. at all for me on this because one. I got to that page, I was like, "Whoa!" Because um, just on that page alone, like John Stewart looks completely different than he did the page yeah. before. Yeah, and and it's not that it's before. bad art at all. No. It's, it's just, just that it's jarringly different. It was fine before when there were two separate it, places across the universe, right? Yeah, it doesn't complement Segovia well, and Segovia doesn't complement Chung. No, yeah. they don't. They, they don't have 
even remotely similar styles. Segovia and is very clean. Or, you know, uh-huh. Yeah. So, you know. And I have to be honest, I mean, if you're putting them two back to back, I wish Segovia just finished the book because. Oh, yeah. I, I, yeah, I mean, I, I've, I think I've said on all these last few issues, I've preferred Segovia. Yeah. Um, I, I've been yeah. really impressed by Segovia's work on, on, on um, this. She's pretty much And, and I, like, I like where it leaves us with Thanagar as rebuilding, you know. Yeah, do um, do it genuinely. Don't lie and like you know yeah, have a mirage. I did like, like seeing the ruins just in the background. Yeah, of the place. yeah that's pretty cool. But um, but yeah, no, I, I I like where it's going, and we have the annual coming up, right? This week. Uh, yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. We, so we get a little bit more of that, and yeah. they're 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 hinting at the 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 multiverse. And, yeah. You know, uh, Shea mentioned to Kendra that she read a map in her wings. Yeah, That's yeah. what she reacted to a few issues ago. Mm-hmm. That was to a, it was a higher plane, was it? Yeah, the, the, the higher yeah. plane of existence. And then at yeah, the end of the book, Starman's like, we need to fix the source wall. And I, I assume fixing the source wall is going to lead to the... Uh, that's the issue, Trin- the Trinity yeah. thing. The, Probably, yeah. Called? I forget what it's called now. But that, that, that's the issue yeah. arc that's coming up. The Sixth yeah. Dimension, right? There you go, that's the one. Sixth Dimension. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. So I thought the art change was a bit much. I thought the exposition was a bit much and clunky unfortunately yeah, yeah. I, but I still, I still I, liked what i read though like it was clunky but i don't know maybe it's just the dc continuity wonk history yeah. nerd i'm like i'm liking me. kind of the overall general direction of what we're doing uh mm-hmm. there's just there's it, some stumbles in how it's been executed here or there it, it's one of those things where i i, I want to criticize that yeah it felt like it's a big exposition dump but i don't have a recommendation of how they could have done this better with this information yeah, me neither. In, in this situation it's it's one of those like i don't know i don't think there's a way to win this i don't know less words <laughs> just do it in less <laughs> words condense it isn't that snyder's always thing is capullo huh. that you're messing up my pictures with your words yeah yeah yeah, yeah. quite quite so. down snyder yeah um i mean hey come on now this is tynan's words True, true, uh, true yeah but tynan learned from snyder so it's still his fault yeah exactly it did but, <laughs> but... Let's at least blame the right person <laughs> but but at least you know if you're gonna be like, if that's your one thing, because any of the tie-in books that we've read, when it gets to these exposition dumps, it's always the ones that we have the most issues with. Whether yeah. it's just a sleep dark or tech or it's whatever. It's the same as Snyder, right? though. Like, Snyder always has yeah. that issue in the middle. It's the exposition dump, and it's like, oh. Yeah. So, so at least they're consistent at what we don't like. Like, you know. <laughs> and and to be fair, it was at the end this time rather than in, in the middle. Yeah. Those mm-hmm. were only three issues. Yeah, yeah, well, it wasn't the second issue. <laughs> sure. <laughs> um, yeah. All right, well, what are you giving Justice League 16? Yeah, this is a 7.5. I did, mostly enjoyed it. Okay, Connor? Um, it's a 6. Uh, too much exposition, art change. Didn't like the stuff with Jean, but I, I enjoy the overall direction. Uh, I'm going to give it a 6.5. Um, I like the overall direction. I like some of the stuff that's going on. Art change, like you say, overall exposition. The Jean retconning is a little bit iffy right now. I'm not yeah. sure how I feel about that. So it's kind of kind of murkyish, but like there's enough good things in there. So I'm gonna say six point five. Um, but yeah, uh, so that'll take us on then to Shazam issue two. Shazam. So yeah, the the kids debate getting on the train and going to one of the whoa, other whoa, magic hang on. Wait, what? Who's it by? Oh, sorry. Uh, Jeff Johns <laughs> is writing. Uh, and Marco Santucci's on that. This is why, because you want to complain that it's not Eagle Shim. That's the only reason why I he's do. correcting me uh, here. No, it is. I mean, it, one, I mean, it's something you should be doing anyway. You do it every I should other do time. it. Yes, no, you're right. I should be doing it. But also, what the damn hell? Where's Eagle Shim? We only got one I mean, issue. That That's fair. Yes, I think but he's... But also, yes. I did not mind Santucci. It shells well. So... Yeah, no, Santucci's art's pretty good, to be fair. But I think... Um, like there was a really good Twitter post. I can't remember who it was actually, but it was another artist sort of sort of sticking up for him, saying artists don't like when they have to like do this. Like they, they feel bad about it. Like yeah, um, no, 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 I get that. Just delay the book. No, I'd rather delay. It's already been delayed too long. Connor. Yeah, no. it's fine. I don't care. I'd this has rather been have seven it. weeks since issue one. <laughs> like this was a while. Give me the power of Shazam, damn it. <laughs> yes. Uh, so so here's my first takeaway mm-hmm. from this book. It is not what I thought it was going to be. Like, this is... I mean, we, we hinted on it a little bit earlier in the show. Mm-hmm. Um, n- like, yeah, we get some more familiar pieces here and there. But um, this whole Magic Lands thing, not at all what I was expecting. Are to, you to upset about it, though? Are you disappointed? 
I'm not disappointed, but I also have no idea where the hell this is going to go, which I guess is good. And right. I... I will echo this. I'm not disappointed that it's doing something new because that's that would be a very unfair thing to say. Yeah, but I'm not as into it either. I, yeah, I see it as a uh, as something that might like come into play in a bigger way later. Right now, I'm seeing yeah. it as a little nice plot for them to do whilst they sets up the villain and other stuff when they're they're away from home. Because obviously, the the parents go up to find them and they're not there because obviously Billy's dad showed up. Claim well, someone claimed to yeah, be Billy's dad. Which complaint issue complaint number one is that was the big cliffhanger of the last book and it's like oh yeah he's here and that's it we, we, we touch on it for a page and then yeah i feel like two. this book is a little bit all over the place in terms of yeah uh, structurally like i feel like we're, we're back and forth constantly between the but, kids and savannah like it, and, i don't know and, I, and, and i will and i will uh what was what i'm looking for counter that with I love when the kids are interacting. Yeah. Like, that's that, 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 that complaint feels strongest. a bit weird to me, though, because I feel like so many books will have two plots to jump back and forth between. Maybe I feel like it was, it felt more erratic in this issue than I usually but feel. But no, I, I like this because it gave us that, that stuff with Mr. Mind and Savannah. Yeah. It gave us it gave us a little peek into what's to come because as far as I knew, Mr. Mind was from Venus. Right, he wasn't associated with magic. He just learned magic and whatnot. Here, they can John's completely changes that, and that I yes, mean, by if, giving if it, us a literal true. page to read. Yeah, which I didn't mind that. That was kind of cool because you look at the background and the way the art handles it. it I, I, it's, I, all I'm saying but, is this: this falls into a case of exposition to me, where this is literally a textbook that I've got to read. Uh, yeah, but there's thing. more. To the page, yeah. though, Connor. Like, the funny thing is, though, is this bothered me far less than that Justice League, the two of the Justice League pages that, that bugged mm -hmm. me. They probably bother me equally. I, because I, I felt like this was a... Because I can see the shot in a movie where it, it falls open and the camera yes, follows but it. In, in, in the movie, it doesn't, it doesn't sit that. there long enough and it, and, and for you to read it. No, Whereas this here, the expectation the is that you read the entire page. Did you like anything about this issue, Connor? This has been nothing but complaints since we started talking about it. I'm just it. saying that I, I, I like the fact that it we, we just learned about these magic lands, right? Yeah. And there's the, the, the animal-themed one. Uh, and that's where it, it's rumored that's where Mr. Mind came from. So yeah. even if that's not true, it's tying into what we're doing. It's it's putting it a little piece by piece. The stuff about Savannah only being like forty but looking way older than that, I loved because he always he's the best when he looks all decrepit. You yeah. know, I actually he's like the complete to, opposite of Billy. I like the Savannah stuff. I think the Mister Main yep. stuff is really fun and creepy. And the fact yep. that he's there, he's at a doctor's, and you think he's seeing the doctor because something wrong with him. Is there yeah. to steal the doctor's tongue because he needs it for his yep. spell? <laughs> like, actually, a medicine man's tongue. Yeah, medicine man's tongue. I really yeah. like the Savannah stuff. The kids stuff. I think their interaction is great. I love that Mary doesn't want to go. She wants to go back home and you know not she mess has a around. College entrance yeah. tests coming up, and, and um, they, they convince her to go. And what I like, actually, just this is a kind of a weird note about the delay because obviously this was meant to come out in December and it had a Christmas themed front cover. Although I got the Sam they cover, so the, you know, as did I. I subverted that. Um, but the funny thing is, is I feel like. The issue itself doesn't actually feel late because it doesn't actually feel like it's Christmas per se. It just, it, it it's Christmassy enough that it felt in tone for Christmas itself, but it's not yeah. actual Christmas, so it doesn't actually feel like it's it's like late by not coming out before December. Yeah. I guess is what I'm um, saying. And the whole Disneyland on steroids thing. The the one yeah. scene that stuck out to me in particular was you have the creepy guy that that welcomes them there, right? Mm -hmm. And then they get there, they're like, "Where did all these kids come from?" And then in the crowd, they go, there's a guy running through, and they go, it's your birthday. And he flees and yells, no. So, like, that little piece is all I need to know. What the hell is going on in Funland? Yeah, some sinister like, undertones I, happening. I love it. It reminds me of Pleasure Island and Pinocchio, you yeah. know? And then uh, the uh, the final uh, sort of reveal is the, the King Kid, who's the champion yeah. or the ruler of the Funlands. Uh, I'm willing to get best guess he is not the seventh. Oh yeah, oh, I'm not gonna guess that. He looks, yeah. he looks like a, a right twerp as well. I, I want to hit him with that yeah. th that stick. Jeweled cane. His jeweled is cane. Is what it is. Yes. yes. Uh, I want to hit him with well, that right now. He looks awful. Stick. Talk about underselling things. <laughs> <laughs> I, but yeah, 
I think is oh. a f- funnier visual in my head of just hitting someone with a stick. <laughs> no. Yes. Yes. Yeah, no. Exactly. No cookies for you. No. See, that's way funnier with a cane. <laughs> Especially if it's covered in jewels. <laughs> But, I mean, the thing, yeah. with, the thing with the dad is that they do check out. Apparently, the credentials check out. The, the, the adoption yeah. services, you know, check them out. Yeah. But, allegedly. Okay. Allegedly. Um, yeah. No, they are pretty good. But, but obviously... I do like, too, that, that mm. when Johns and Frank first dropped this, they immediately jumped into Black Adam, right? Mm. And then we got away from Shazam for a little bit. Who, who and, and now we're getting Savannah in mind. Yeah, I'm sure so. Black Adam will be back for Arc 2 or 3. Yeah. But, you know, he'll be back. But Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not saying, like... But I like that now we're expanding that it's Mr. Mind. And I'm kind of hoping that we get a Mr. Mind cameo coming up in the movie. Mm-hmm. Like, because it seems like the movie is borrowing heavily from, from this version of the character. Absolutely. So, um, uh, you know... Um, I still like and, all the kids. And, I, I like yeah. their interaction... I think the art is pretty good. I know there's a disappointment that it's not Eaglesham, but I think it has a very similar style. It's it's, it's intentionally trying to keep it within the yep the style I of think the first it's, My problem is it's not as clean, and it plays a lot more on the cross hatching and the shadows. Yeah, is, it's not to me, identical. To me, is not as appealing. Um, sue me for trying to look at the positive here, Connor. <laughs> well, fine, I will. I will win. You're definitely not being Freddy right now. Freddy. Yeah, the, the, yeah. This whole great Freddy gender the great degrader side. nickname starting to stick around here. I, I, I feel like... Yeah. Well, maybe they should just give me better books. <laughs> I like this book plenty. I, I think Connor's been far too uh, down on yeah, it. Yeah, me too. Because I had a lot of fun with this one. That two-page spread when they hit the fun lands for the first time. Yep. It was really nice. Proper. I, I kind of want to go there. Like, it looks fun. It's my idea of a vacation. I want to see the other lands, though, coming up, too. Like, the Wildlands and uh, Game Land, I think, I is one of like them. I feel like pretty much all the other ones sounded more appealing to me than this one. <laughs> they did to me oh, as well, but uh, for a story, but this one, obviously, is the one that appeals to kids. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> Don't give me that tone. You know what makes sense. Yeah. I, I, you know, when, when they first added all these other characters in, in the, the backup story, mm-hmm. I was a little bit worried we are getting a little too much, but now... I like them. They all play off of each other so yeah. well. They are a family. Like, that's what you want. That's Shazam in a nutshell is yeah, the Shazam family. There's a team, so. there's a dynamic, there's, there's things, like, it, mm-hmm. it works. It's, it's kind of what makes it pop in a lot of ways. Yeah. Um, so, I, uh, no, I'm still thinking Shazam quite a bit. Uh, yeah. So, uh, for entertainment's sake, let's, let's see. I like Connor being in the middle because it means we bring back up to something a bit more positive. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, Connor, what's your, uh, Matt, what's your rating? Sorry. Yeah, uh, I'm going to give this an 8.5. I know it's a little bit too high, but again, it felt me with joy. Um, and I think that's what John's is going for, so. Yeah. Connor, divide that by something. <laughs> um, Not a huge amount. I mean, it, it's, it's all right. Uh, I like the kids' dynamics still together. But, you know, I had to have a fair few problems as well. So I'll give it a 6. Okay. Uh I, I'll probably go with a straight eight. Uh, I, I had a lot of fun. I really liked it. Um, I, I really liked the introduction of Savannah and Mr. Mind. Um, I like Mr. Mind's design and look. He's got a radio. He's yeah. literally inside him with a radio. I just think that's really funny to me. Yeah. Uh, so, you know. Um, I wasn't misreading that, right? He's in his ear, right? Yeah. Yeah. He's in his ear. Yeah. Good. yeah. <laughs> just double check. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. That'll take us on to Aquaman, number 44. Kelly Sue Deconic writing. Robson Roca on the art. Let me flip to my other book here. Uh, so Ooh, this is uh, so he was given the, the task last issue to yeah. take. I've, I've not remembered the new names yet. Hold on, what was the, what was the woman's name? Yeah. To, to take her back to her mother because her mother's the the, the sea yeah. witch. Or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And uh, the old lady's promised that she'll give him a, his memory back. You know, she's, she's yeah. got a cure if he does so. Uh, but he's, he's he wants to ask some questions, you know. He's because you know, obviously then the last issue it, it kind of caused a part of the sea, and they're like, yeah. "Hey, how did that happen?" So he's demanding answers, and she's been very cryptic. She's not giving him straight answers. It's all this very oh, you don't understand. It's you know before your time. It's it's all these vague kind of you know these annoying godlike answers basically. Um, yep, is, is what it is, yeah. and uh, it basically leaves in a huff, but. The, the 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 lady what's her name again Callie Callie thank you Callie Callie is kind of or is it Kaylee 
Maybe Maybe Kaylee. Kaylee. Whatever. Yeah. But she 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 kinda doesn't want to go. She's kinda like, you know you know, giving Aquaman shit for it. Uh Arusio, as she calls him. Um, Arusio. Most yeah. of the issue though is the uh is this kind of tribal ritual. Uh, uh. Which I like a lot in theory. Mm-hmm. I feel like it goes on a bit too long. It does go on a bit too long. I did like the the, the three pages where each of the people you see like their true forms in the flames when they, they kind of reveal they're actually yep. these these beings. Uh, um, they they are gods of old sea yeah. gods. Yeah, yeah. In different cultures, because guess who did a deep dive of to look at up each one of them? Uh, Tangoria, who looks like a reptile, is my favorite. <laughs> oh, that was the last one, wasn't it? Yeah, Tangaroa. Tangaroa. He's, he's sorry. a Polynesian one. I was I was familiar with him uh, more. There's there, at, at the Tiki Room in in Disneyland. He's a character. So of course, no Tongaroa. Uh, Master Agwe. Um, Some sort I'm of African remember. one. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he's like Haitian Caribbean. So that that was pretty cool. Um, Manan Maclear would have felt right back home in uh, in, in, in the in, Liam uh, Sharp book. Yeah, Ball. yeah, Red Ball. I was thinking that's yeah. got to be an Irish one. Yeah. Um, the only one I couldn't find was Repune. Um, uh, Repun, the God of Sea and Bounty. So, but but the other ones are all from different cultures. Yeah, where, Ke- Kelly Sue did some research. That's all I'm saying. Um, uh, just she did. But like Kamungye, uh, which is the second one, he's a, a North American, Native American one, and I really read up on that one. And if there was a comic a about that character, head? he's a, a, an octopus, right? An octopus is, is his form. Um, so yeah, I I guess. I it's guess it's throwing uh, me off that he's got legs. Yeah. Yeah. So uh and then uh Taylock is a is a uh, Aztec or a Mayan. Um but yeah, so anyways I like where this is going now because yeah. of, of how of how Arthur ended up here, right? It was through Drowned Earth. And in Drowned Earth we had sea gods from other planets coming to invade because of what Arion did, right? To to keep them away. With Poseidon, and here you have all of these wherever he's at, or where sea, sea gods have been banished to. Yeah, um, which would mean either he's taken on a presence of a sea god, right? Mm-hmm. Or he just ended up there by chance, and now they're going to use him to get out. Yeah, because they, they turn on him. Because because Kali does kind of show mm-hmm. up last minute when because he, mm-hmm. he tried to convince her and he wasn't sure if he did, but you know she shows up yep. eventually. They go down. Uh, a bit more ritual. Art's very good again from Roka, I thought. It's, it's got a good yeah. Yeah. It feels different. It's got a nice atmosphere to it. And they turn yeah. on him, and the ending of the book is actually, they're trying to drown him. And Because uh, I, I don't think he knows he can't drown. I don't think he knows he can yeah. be underwater. Because I think that's the final page of the issue here. Is He's underwater, and he's like, you know, he's because it was, it was the last line here when he says... Uh, li- it was the living fear. Yep. Yeah, because if, if it, I felt like the fire like burning... I thought it was water entering my lungs, invading my body, but it wasn't. It was the the the, the fear leaving. Fear leaving. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I think that's him realizing that he can't drown, that he can breathe underwater. Yeah. I think that's what that yeah. moment is. Um, which yeah. Which is cool. I see. I I, I miss it. Maybe I misinterpreted this scene, mm-hmm. but I figured they actually all know exactly who he is, and they're trying to show him and. So it's not that they're turning on him. They're, they're kind of going, no, you're like us. Oh, sure, that's fair. It just it feels like that yeah. until that point because they, they, they're fighting him and he's trying to fight back. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, it seemed like a heel turn, but it wasn't quite. Um, yeah. And so, so again, I, so I also looked up Nama and Nama is a ancient Sumerian sea god. So she's like one of the first. Oh, we're going back um, so I'm wondering okay. if, that, if that's going <laughs> to fit in. And then when you Google Kali and sea god, who comes up is uh, Amphitrite, who was Poseidon's wife and queen of the sea. Um, so, again, uh, this book is is it makes it very hard for me to do work at work when I read this because now I go off on a Google adventure. Yeah, I'm supposed to be doing other things. Yeah, I'm really conflicted because I like a lot of these ideas a lot more than I do reading yep. it. Like, oh, I, I love all the stuff it's dealing yeah. with and all these themes, all these old gods, but I'm not as into it as I'm reading it for whatever reason. Did you like any books this week, Carl? Yes. <laughs> I'm just, just checking. Cause... I'll be honest. 
Not a great week for me. Yeah. I don't know why. Yeah. Um, I I really enjoyed this still. Yeah. Only as did I. I, I, I love I, I love the art. I, I I did think the ritual went on a little bit too long. It kind of lulled in the middle because of yeah. that a little bit. But I love the ending. Uh, the opening two pages we didn't mention is actually we get to see Mira who's like mourning yeah. the loss of Aquaman and she's making water sculptures with her powers of, of Aquaman. Yeah. Uh, and, it, and it hints that she's a little bit more powerful than we've ever thought what she can do with the water because she can feel Arthur. So she kind of knows that she doesn't know if she can actually feel him, yeah. right? Or if it's her memory. Well, yeah, because it, it, it basically says she can make an identical replica of him yeah. with water because right. she's felt him so much and so closely and personal. Yeah. She that, knows exactly how the water should be around him. Yeah, right. she, she, she's felt the water run through him, through you know, over his skin, all that kind of thing. Right. And because of that, she can form this... Per- and I'll, I'll, I've never seen her do this before. Maybe this is an old thing from an old book yeah. that maybe has happened before, but... Yeah. This idea that she could do like perfect artistic representations of someone uh, with the water is kind of a cool idea. Yeah, uh, and, and basically they're looking to to give her a suitor, you know, someone someone to oh. sit beside her on the we, throne. We've seen this. We've seen this happen before with his mom. Yeah, they're, right? they're doing American Idol for for her, yeah. her new king. <laughs> oh. Yeah, Man. and and you just know Arthur's going to get back a bit too late. Yeah, yeah. and it's like so oh, it's that, already it's married. that a hole arm. I'm going to be so mad. Orm's not going to be eligible for no, this. No, Or- Orm's a criminal. Come on, <laughs> don't don't. He's a very sly criminal. Don't don't count him out. Yeah, no, uh, no. I, I enjoyed this issue quite a bit again. Um, I think the last one was just a little bit stronger, just because there wasn't that law in the middle mm-hmm. for me. Uh, but I still thought it was pretty good. So, yep. uh, uh, what are we rating this, Matt? Yeah, I'm giving this an eight. I really, again, Google Adventures abound. Anybody <laughs> uh, can do that. Uh, 6.5 um, I'll go with straight 8 as well I'll agree with Matt on this one straight 8 uh, yep. dug it quite a bit uh, so we'll move on then to Sideways Issue 12 uh, written by Dan Didio with art by Kenneth Rockefeller and Shane Davis now Matt forgot to read this yep so l- let me know I'll, I'll get caught up um, before it ends so there's only one um, more issue I think I know. Two I'll, more? I'll be caught up by then yeah, okay. no yeah. 13 13. So that's one more issue yeah. then. Yeah. Yeah, I'll be caught up by the next time. So basically, if you remember the last issue, ended with an explosion at the the lab, and yep. the detective runs in and he finds Sideways lying there on a table, and he's like, "Hey, I know it's you, Derek. You know, it's like you've got the same height and build. You, you, it's clear that the, you know you take a great interest in the case of of this this murder. Who's your mother? It's you." And he kind of admit, eventually just admits it. And he basically says, okay, what happened up there? And that's when the art changes, because when he tells the story, we get like, okay, so they tried to make Sideways open up a rift to another dimension, thinking, oh, we're going to take secrets and profit off like powers from other dimensions. And of course, a giant Hellmouth-esque monster comes through the portal and starts killing their soldiers like immediately. Oh, dear. Uh, and chaos ensues. And of course, Sideways eventually... like. To, to fight this and get out of it, he opens a rift within the rift, which creates a singularity. <laughs> singularity, sorry if I say that properly. Um, and causes the explosion. Okay. So he basically saves the world because he right. he thinks outside the box. Um, and that's kind of the, the big action kind of set piece of the middle of the issue. But he's kind of working with the cop. The cop kind of believes what he's told him and that they're going to go over this, but he should go home. And he goes home and he has a bit of a hearty heart with his dad, who, you know, last issue kind of admitted that he didn't want a kid and that he was always more the mother's son than anything to do with him. Mm-hmm. But he's willing to try and work through it. But the issue ends with him actually introducing him, introducing Derek to his uh, birth mother. Uh, it's like, here's something that may, you know, help his men. Like, here's your birth mother um, kind of thing. Uh, so that was how the, the issue ended. So they kind of always knew the birth mother was there? Well, I think so, yeah, because I think, I think, well, at the very least, like, he tracked her down. Okay. I mean, if he was given up for adoption, it may not have been, like, a bad thing. It was just, you know, she didn't want a kid. And, yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah. But, like, I, uh, you know, okay. Maybe they kept so it So was him. it that lady that we kind of saw earlier? Where, or is this the first time we're seeing her? Uh, this is the first time we're seeing her, I think. She doesn't seem to okay. speak English, at least from the, the panel at okay. the end. She, she speaks uh, Spanish. Gotcha. But, gotcha. uh... uh no, that was an enjoyable issue. If you're liking Sideways, I think th- this is just another solid Sideways issue. The art change is a little bit weird, um, but they are still pretty good when it changes to uh, to uh, Davis. Uh, it's just different from Rockefeller. But 
they, right. they try and get around it with the whole like you know this is what happened earlier thing and it kind of works but it's also kind of noticeable so you know minor dock points for that if, if i'm giving it a rating you know which i am uh it's probably a seven right uh cool so yeah yeah that's what that's what it is uh but uh, so yeah one, one issue left so we'll talk about the final issue next month uh, yeah. and do that then yeah kind of sad but it seems like they're wrapping it up yeah you know the, uh, his birth mother and you know whatnot yeah. So we'll move on then. We'll move on to Freedom Fighters issue two, written by Robert Venditti and art by Eddie Barrows. A book that I actually forgot to read and, and then quickly read it last minute. I read this right before we started yeah. recording. Uh, it was when I was doing the list of the books and putting the names in so I could you know read them for this. I was like, oh shit, Freedom Fighters was this week. Yeah, Re- really quick read though. A lot of a lot of the, those um, Brianna's double pages that we got in in. Uh, Barrows. Barrows, yeah. Yeah, Barrows, not to be honest. Yeah. Um, but Barrows from Detective. From, from Detective. Yeah. 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 Uh, so yeah. this is an action issue. The last issue ended with the, the new generation of Freedom Fighters showing up. we got Doll Woman, Bomb Man, if that's his name, and uh, Black Condor. Human Bomb. Human Bomb. Human yeah. Bomb, there you go. Yeah. Human Bomb. <laughs> still learning the names. Bomb Man. <laughs> it, it, there's a roll call at the start. The, the, which I appreciate, but I, start, I still can't remember Doll them woman. that easily. Yeah. yeah. But anyway, so this is them fighting the Nazis and specifically their giant Nazi robot that they've got. Uh, giant, giant, flipping Iron Giant version. Yeah. Open Nazi Iron Giant. So Ugh. a lot of this book is two page spreads. A lot of this book is the action, and it's pretty yeah. much all fun. And the, the idea is the narration is like, yeah, I hope everyone's seeing this. The, you know, he hopes that the public is seeing this fight against the Nazis, so they'll be inspired. Yeah. Well, and and did you guys also get the vibe that? It felt like they were purposely prolonging the fight so more people could watch. Yeah, I got that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so I got that too. Sure There's a bit of showmanship uh, in it. Uh, but yeah. It, sh- it, sh- it showcased the powers. You know, it showed the human bomb was you know blasting them. Uh, doll woman was going inside and like you know rummaging around inside because it was that joke where they they blast them over and he falls down while she's inside them. He's like, this is the first time I've ever been good that Nazi craftsmanship so good because you yeah. know should be screwed yeah. otherwise. German engineering. That was it. German yeah. engineering. Yeah. Uh, yeah. so no I mean yeah I liked another Robert Vendetti issue I don't know what's happening but that's two yeah, in a it's row it's weird man you, it's real you good, and me it? both <laughs> now you know how I felt going back and reading Hall and Pals oh yeah going like what is, what is this it's conflicting at first isn't it yeah. I don't know what's happening well, and that's what it's this book that makes me want to check out that, that one I brought up in, in the solicits Aye. about World War 2 because if it's going to be more of this vibe you know where actually World War 2 is being fought like Hmm. I'm curious to see how he does that. So, because yeah. here it was a whole lot of fun. Because a couple of characters even have a little heart to heart with some of the kids or whatever that are mm-hmm. around. Although the twist at the end is that the kid that he was talking to turns out to be a Nazi agent. Yeah, but plastic. Plastic one. Yeah. So, mm. uh, one of the plastic. But I love men. what they do too with the, you know, they're dropping the flyers from the ship yeah. as they go. And it's like, America's on its way back. Freedom's on its way. Yeah, they've, got a and, jet. And, they've got a jet with a big flag at the yeah. bottom of it. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and it as goes like, pretty out there as well. Yeah. Uh, yeah, know, it hangs out there for a while. The, the extra dimensional realm of ideas with the tree. Yeah. And then, you know, yeah. it starts to grow again. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Is, is the that, tree that, of that liberty. Decide? Yeah. Um, um, so... That stuff's all really fun. Um, it feels kind of hopeful and inspirational, and the action's really well drawn and inventive. I'm also, into something it. I never think we'd see was Hitler Two Electric Boogaloo. Oh yeah, <laughs> I laughed. In fact, I was reading it. Connor was on the Skype call when I was reading it, and I actually. <laughs> yeah, laugh at it. I love yeah. Hitler the second. Yeah, I just I started laughing out loud. I had to react to that audibly when I got yeah. to that page. Yeah, it's pretty uh, great. I love so. how he has a portrait of you know the first behind his yes. senior. I suppose we should say. Yeah, see here. Um, did you guys also go to the, the, the you know, remember the yelling Hitler memes that people were putting oh, yeah, together? Yeah, 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 from Downfall. I but... immediately went to that from Downfall. Like... <laughs> Which I'm yeah. sure aren't funny if you speak German, but for, for, for those of us who can't no. speak German, but they're hilarious. <laughs> yeah, because the Where's Wally one is still the gold standard. <laughs> he can't find Wally. No matter how hard he looks, and everyone else has found it before him. My, my two favorites, oh. mainly because they're in my wheelhouse of interest, mm. is when HD DVD lost the format wars. There was a good one for that. <laughs> and there was a good one for when they announced the Xbox and the PS4, and the Xbox One uh-huh. was like revealed so terribly, and everything about it was, it was really yeah, bad. There was a really good one when Arkham Knight came out. 
and yeah. on PC was a absolute mess. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. How oh, I remember good. that. Yeah. Oh, it's yeah. so okay. good. Um, but so... the, the best part of that meme though is that thing where Hitler kind of says. Oh, but it's okay because we still have this. And then the two guys look at each other like, "Oh no, there's, there's more. To, there's more. Yeah. There's more to this news that's going to ruin this." Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, but I was getting vibes from that through this, which is what you want because a pissed off Nazi, like because they've been thwarted, is like one of the best. So, um, yeah. yeah, but yeah, it ugh, really good. I'm, I'm really enjoying this one too. Yeah, me too. And Didi, what are you doing? Hawkman and now Freedom Fighters. Hmm. I'm enjoying a Vendetta book. I don't know how you feel about this. This is bizarre. Anyway, what are you rating them at? I'm going to give it a straight eight. I, I mean, it's a lot on the art here with the two mm. page spreads and the action. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah Connor? Uh, 7.5. I'm also going to give it a straight eight. It was good. I can't argue with it. Uh, two in a row. I think I'm in for all 12 at this point, which is scary. Yeah. Yeah. So here you go. That's it. It's a really quiet week. I could use more books in this week. So by all means, give yeah. me, give give me two of them. Give me give me them. Give them to me. You know what I meant. Um, that's actually the last new book that's out this week. So we have some punishment issues to talk about. Uh, if you're not familiar with what that is, basically on Patreon.com/slash/MailFuzzTV, we can go and support us for as little as a dollar per month. You can go do that. Uh, help us afford all these books, uh, if nothing else. But uh, me and Connor have have a tier where people can make us read a book once per month. There's two people who do it for Connor. There's one person who does it for me. This is a higher tier, of course. So first up in this this list is Red Hood Outlaw number twenty eight. Scott Lobdell writing. I never actually asked you who the artist was in this. Now I think about it. Was it uh, Pete Woods? I think it was Pete Woods again. Yeah, yeah, it was him yeah, last was. time. Uh, so take it away. So I hate the opening two pages. This on par with some of the most I've ever hated Lobdell's writing. So yeah, we, lot, we, op- we open again with the, the America um, location box. And we're with the with the sheriff that, that, that Red Hood was with a couple of issues ago. Uh, and um, there's a mysterious figure being like, oh, tell me what you remember. You know, write it down because he can't talk. Um, and then it cuts to the, the second page. We see who it is. And... I need to point. Out, so you know how at the start of all the DC books you have the oh, oh well Marvel does well, you know the the introduction of the character of like so yeah. you know this one is Jason Todd used to be a Robin before he was murdered and came back angry an engine of destruction he tried he tired of redemption meh now he is the is Red Hood outlaw and then but he's we, not uh, though this is what kills no, me no, 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 but it, I, no, I, I only, oh, Connor I, Connor he had to become someone else. You have to become yes. something else. Yes. I only mention that because that's actually relevant to what is on the rest of the page. Usually you can kind of just ignore yeah. that, right? Um, on this one, I had to go back and go, wait, what am I missing? Because you have a very Batman-looking figure with a visor that would make Pete proud. Yes. Um, I, I, I'm almost tempted to try and show you, but it'll probably look really yeah. badly on the mm. camera. Um and it, it comes up with a big arrow and says, oh, that's not him. That's Wingman. Um, I was like, well, that's not him? That's not who? And I had to go back up and go, oh, the introduction. <laughs> so that was really bad for, in terms of just writing. Yeah. And then is, there's is it Wingman stuff. the Australian Batman? Uh, he might be. I don't remember yeah. well enough. No, I'm not like, that. Um, but then it, 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 comes, it has two other boxes on the side that says, in the old days of comics, we'd call this a subplot which means we'll be ge- dealing with this guy in a few issues. Oh, my God. I'm like, this oh, is the most... He, he did not. Bullshit writing ever. Also, if Wingman is the Australian Batman, as has Robin a koala? No, it's a kangaroo, obviously. Uh, is it Tasmanian Devil? I'll allow it. No, a kangaroo's a villain. <laughs> the kangaroo's a villain who jumps around a lot. Yeah, all right. Well, that oh, was... No, here we go. It, it's all for naught, though, because Wingman is from Europe. So, uh, okay. Not, not is it the same Australia. Wingman I'm looking at though? Hey, he, has, he he has an appearance in in twenty. It looks like twenty seven. Have, have read that long. Oh, okay. So yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's got he's got a cool helmet on. Uh, trying to see exactly where he's from because I know Morrison brought him back in ink. Um. So but just yeah. as Europe, so it's okay. not. Uh, Dark Ranger is. Wait, no. Yeah, Dark Ranger was the Australian one. Makes sense. Oh, but anyway, so oh, then yeah. that was this horrible introduction to set up a subplot that's just contrived. 
But then it cuts to the town of Appleton, and it's Jason there, and it's this all this real like it's this like village fate sort of thing going on, and it's everyone giving out apple pies and cider, and I'm like, I feel like I've missed something. I don't remember this, and especially when you know he get so the someone call he goes, oh, enjoy your time in Appleton, stranger, and I'm like, okay, fine, he's just arrived, and then the next page is is these t- these two elderly people at a stall selling cider going hey jay over here uh you know and they're like oh you know come come and have fun you know some cider with us like they know him i'm like i don't know i don't remember these people at all um uh, they give him some cider and he's like oh you know you've been hospitable to a fault and then he, he sees the reflection of of them in the in the bottom of the the glass of them pulling out a rifle and trying to, trying to kill him for what, some reason or another, so you got this this old dude just pulling out this rifle and trying to kill him, and uh, yeah, Jason just 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 beats him up a bit, fights his way through some some stuff through quite the crowd until eventually someone knocks him out with like a sledgehammer, um, and then he's tied up. He's, he's obviously he's in his civvies during all this. Then he comes to he's tied up as like a on, on like a scarecrow style uh, plinth um, in his red hood outfit. And there's like a kind of Solomon Grundy meets Frankenstein wearing farmer's overalls creature who's attacking him. Uh, he has a bit of a fight with him. He ends up um, impaling him with the uh, with the, the scarecrow spike thing. You know, the, the, the whole big thing. It's a big, big yeah. trick, essentially, with a point. Runs it through him and he keeps going. So he's you know, keeps on fighting him. Yada, yada, yada. The fight scene's all right because, you know, Pete Woods, uh, art's pretty good. I can't really complain. Yeah. Um, but then it ends with Batwoman showing up, and this is uh, with you know, she, she says hood, which is fine. I mean, he's not really even wearing a hood anymore, but whatever. And his response is woman, not Batwoman, not Bat, just just woman. I'm like, okay, this is weird. Um, yeah, they they have a little bit of a tussle for a couple of pages. Um, she's like, oh, I'm not going back to Gotham with you. And she's like, oh, I don't have time for this because there's an army of those Frankenstein-y monsters coming at the pair of them. Yeah. It's a whole lot of bullshit. So I'll give it a 3.5. <laughs> and I hate this. <laughs> All right. Well, that takes me on to Hawk and Dove issue 8. The final issue of the series. I mean, I have no idea what I'm reading next one for this. Uh, interestingly, though, it can now be on elsewhere on the multiverse, so it could pick. So, so Tyler could pick a Marvel book if he wanted to, or yeah. an indie book. Um, I'm sure some hey, good books that he hey, wants me to try. If you're listening, Deadpool. Pete loves Deadpool. So. <laughs> keep, keep it on topic, right? On theme. So actually Michael new, Deadpool. There's a new Leftfield book coming out in April, Matt. Yeah, I'm oh, not yeah. part of this, so... Called I Agent X. Major X. <laughs> Major X, that's right. Oh, that's even worse. <laughs> he messed that up like four times on the show. <laughs> yeah. At least when I said Mr. X, it made me think of Resident Evil, and I was like, oh. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, Hawk and Dove issue 8, Rob Layfield doing everything. Um, unfortunately. That's going to be the shortest one of these, I think, out of all the books I've talked about, these, or all the issues I've talked about at Hawk and Dove, just because... Not a lot really happens in it. it. It's like we introduced some stuff last issue, which I barely remember, to be honest. The, the, yeah. the people of the Dayak, and this villain's hired a hunter to bring in Hawk and Dove. And Hawk and Dove come after them. You know, we start the issue and they're already like mid fight. And it's, you know, Hawk's fighting a bunch of dudes with swords, and his narration is atrocious because it's just constant. It's, he basically says, I used to play, you know, football in college. And then everything he says in his narration box for the next two pages is just him going, oh, this is just like, you know, at the starting line and, you know, I'm the... the, the, the. A lot of terms you'd understand, Matt. I I, I can't remember them. Cause yeah, I but nobody talks like that. Yeah, where is it? Like, that? I played football and I, I will bring it up, but I don't bring that up in everyday life. I'm going to read you a few narration boxes okay. here. This is a mid-fight right. as he's tackling people. Mm-hmm. Can't risk a fumble this close to the end zone. No bad turnovers. No way I'm going out like this. Not when I'm this close to scoring the winning touchdown. 
This is the red zone. Time to dig deep and push. Touchdown. I've done my uh, part. Man. I've run interference. <laughs> I got fumble. He screwed up. Touchdown. <laughs> he, he, he got it at the end. He pulled it off. Uh, yeah. Everything in between that, you lost me. Yeah. It, it, like, it, it was just so obnoxious. Uh, uh, and then Don's with uh, the, the woman that was introduced last issue who's kind of helping yeah. her. And they go after uh, Hunter and a bit of a fight again. Dialogue's awful. Art's awful. You know, feet are looking a bit iffy, <laughs> as per usual. Mm -hmm. uh, some really iffy looking face shapes. Not even just the face features, but the face shapes are a bit off in places. And eventually, the the, the Dragon of Dayak, the main bad guy, who looks like a... I don't know, like a, a kung fu version of Razal Ghul. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, who's determined to like kill and you know he turns into like a lizard person at one point. Yeah, he's like. What the hell is this book? There will not be another cycle of uh, Age of Avatars. Uh, the Age of Avatars will end before it begins anew. Prepare to meet the fate I have chosen for you. And he, as he's saying this, he turns into like a lizard day looking thing with a tail. Um, and he fights Dawn. And then Hawk comes in with a sword. And it's just it's fight, fight, fight. It's a whole thing. Uh, Hunter basically disappears after this. A uh, bunch of bodies lying down dead. Yeah, he, he stabs the bad guy. It's, that's basically it. That's, that's it. And then there's like two and that's how this book went out. There's two pages at the end of them in a rooftop, just basically reminiscing about everything they've done in this eight issue series. Going, well, we've fought through. Where is it? Um, da 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 da. After all we've done, I still. Uh, where is it? Where's where the list? They actually list like. Oh yeah, here we go. So uh, I'm proud of what we've achieved so far, partner. Condor, Swan, Necromancer, Hunter, the Can. We've taken all challengers and we're still standing strong. And I'm like. We've had like five villains in the space of eight issues. <laughs> like, oh, kind of impressive. Which, I mean, okay, like the first two would appear and then the last two were kind of linked, but so it's not even that weird, but it still feels weird that they're listing them all off. And I'm like, you didn't give me enough time to really get to know any of these villains. It's one thing when the Flash has like the Rogues Gallery kind of rotating in and out, but we know who all yeah. those characters are. We, we have some understanding for them. Um, so basically, they dive off the roof saying their names, saying Hawk and Dove. And it just says, it ends with the word, the beginning. And I'm like, no, 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 no. This is the end, and there's been no Hawk and Dove book since, so piss off. And that's, that's it. It sucked. That was really optimistic, wasn't it? There wasn't, there wasn't even, like, much to talk about this. At least in other ones, there was, like, some really specifically bad moments. And the only thing I really had to specifically latch on to was the whole football, the football uh, narration. Yeah. And even then, it was terrible, because, like, even football players don't talk like that. Yeah. It, it just, like... The art's just as bad as it's been, the dialogue's all over the place, um, you know, it sucks. Hockey Dove, yeah. Rob Layfield sucks. Um, I'm glad it cancelled, I'm glad it died, and never put him in all DC book You're again. only saying that because it means there's no more of it that you have to read. That's also true. I'm glad about that fact, yes. I'm glad of that. So, Tyler's going to have to tell me what he wants me to read next month, going forward. I mean, <sighs> if you want to change my book, I'm okay with that. Hey, Brimstone's got a few left. You may as well finish. Yeah, there's, there's no need to get it all over and done with. You know how I feel. Speaking of Curse of Brimstone, though, oh, I suppose I should rate Huck and Dove, shouldn't I? Uh, you, should, you should, before you try and segue too nicely. Three out of ten. But yeah, uh, Curse of Brimstone, issue nine, Justin Jordan writing, uh, Eduardo Pansica on the art? Uh, I assume so, based on how it looked. Okay. But, uh, I mean, speaking of three out of tens. <laughs> Not to ruin anything here, but yeah. So this issue opens with him being a pro. He's on, you know, he's on his own. His sister pissed off somewhere. I think I don't really remember. She was mad at him. Um, yeah, fate shows up and is like, "Hey, I'm going to help you out." Uh, he's like, I, I, "You know, I, 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 I noticed you were doing this stuff. I'm going to see, you know, if I can fix you." Yada yada yada. Oh, it's not magical. I, I assume this was some sort of supernatural thing, but I guess not. And then they have a have a bit of a fight, and Brimstone somehow wins. He like melts Fate's helmet into his face. So that's one really upset Connor on a personal level. It actually did. I'm, I'm like, piss off. Because his homeboy. Yeah, that doesn't make sense fate, though. Be... <laughs> you can't melt. 
Can't melt the helm of Naboo. Well, Brimstone's fire can. Oh, good lord. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That'd be, that, that's like the whole issue is them fighting and going, no, and, and it's it's Brimstone so, going, this is who I am, and Fate going, I'm sure there's something more going on here. I can probably help you out if you give me a chance. There's a bit of, bit of back and forth where he's like, Fate's like, fine, screw this, blast him with lightning and brings the rain down so it you know puts his fire out. And he just turns the fire back on and Fate's like, you you boiled the rain. And he just goes, and, and, and then Brimstone goes, fire consumes. It's just atrocious dialogue all through. I, I hate this issue, even more so than usual, because it made me, it, it made Fate look like a chump. I was I was so batting it, for Fate on my Justice League at the start of this, <laughs> and here he is getting taken out by bloody Brimstone. Poor choice, poor choice, Carl. Voters, take this into note when you're voting for which team is best. That Fate got taken out by Brimstone. This is not canon. Like not a chump. <laughs> Connor's words. Connor's own words. Yeah. Fate was a chump. Yeah, I'm not standing for this. Here's the thing. So if it's not magic, what, what the hell is it? Who knows? So if it's not magic, it's going to be science. Uh, and it doesn't seem like it's science. It's... And, and, the, and, if, and if it's a demon, it's still magic. Yeah, I don't actually know. I, I genuinely... It doesn't, it doesn't get as far as answering it. I mean... I hate it. I hate it. Fate, the whole time, Fate's going, oh, but you're so powerful. You're only using a fraction of what you did. You could, you're, you know, you're destroying these little buildings and stuff, but you could destroy you could destroy cities. And Brimstone's like, nah, screw that. I could destroy planets. Uh, yeah, here you go. What are you? Uh, I thought you were some kind of supernatural entity grafted onto Joe Chamberlain, something like what happened to Jason Blood, but that's not it at all. He's, he's the Phoenix. We, we kept comparing uh, us to Marvel. Yeah. You know, this is DC's Ghost Rider. I actually think it's just the Phoenix Force. That's what it is. Yeah, but yeah. at least the Phoenix Force is cool. Yeah, right? what to say then? Oh, yeah. So then he out outright says, this isn't magic, which is good. I'm in need of something that isn't. This is useful if I can separate it from you. It's a cosmic entity. Oh, I hate it. It's a two out of ten. Screw oh, this book. You said speak Ooh. the threes. Your segues yeah, well, invalid. Yeah, I hate it even more. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, I was I, I, it was a three on initial read, but now that I'm talking about it, I hate it more. <laughs> I'm angry again. Fair oh, enough. Jeez. Well, in that bombshell, because he blew up the flames and stuff. Get it? Get it? Get it? Yeah. Anyway, on that, yeah. we will move on to the final part of the show, which is picking our favorite stuff of the week. We do best panel slash moment. We do best cover, best art. And uh, we do a top five books of the week. And given that Carl doesn't seem to like comic books anymore, that's going to be an interesting top five. So, hey, hey, this was you on last episode of Elsewhere. You didn't like any of your books. Yeah, but that, those were Marvel books, so... That's not the point. <laughs> I like good books. I'm not, I'm, I'm not picky about <laughs> about where they're from. I just want good books to read, and this isn't them, with the exception of, like, one of them. Ah, oh dear. I, I, feel free to, to, to moan about Connor being moany. I'm all for it. I love reading that. Right. <laughs> Brainiac strikes again more like Jesus Christ. Well, it, 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 you know, it's fine if you don't want me to be this negative, but I, I, I don't know what to tell you. Issues weren't that good. I feel like most people have a meter, like green's good and red's bad. We don't go into the red, though. We go into the ginger. Yeah, I'm okay with that. Yeah. All right. Best panel slash moment. Matteo. It, it's from Naomi. It's when Superman comes back to to clean up, and we get that sequence where we don't get to see him, but we do. You know, it's really good. Yeah, no, that's a really, really, really good pick. Um, I'm going to go with Savannah attacking the Doctor, <laughs> with the instructions of Mister Mind. Uh, mm -hmm. It's a really cool scene because you have that shadow in the background. Yeah. We there's, see him removing the tongue. There's a psychotic, mad scientist kind of vibe to it that I really dig. Yep. Uh, I, I like how John's gone out of his way to show how Savannah's different than Lex. Yeah, you know? no, I like that too. Uh, Connor, do you have it? <laughs> yeah, I do. Look, I liked Freedom Fighters, didn't I? I was pretty yeah. positive on that. Okay, sure. The pick, pick a Freedom Fighters panel then. I am going to actually, and and uh, it, it's actually, it's, it's, I think it's a good spread. So on one of the earlier double page spreads, it's when the human bomb is is blasting through the foot to make the mm. the robot fall down, 
Um, but it's actually the, the bit in the middle where the whole beam of light goes up and the robots fall in. I think that's a fantastic image. Yeah, it's good. No, can't argue with that. Uh, best cover of the week. Matt. Oh, it's Shazam, the, the variant. It can't not be. Yeah. The, the, the Lupacino is, is great for, for reasons, but nothing stands out like that Somni Shazam variant. It, yeah. it is that Somni Shazam variant, isn't it? I think we're all going to agree on this. Yes. <laughs> It's it's the one. It's the one, yeah. It's the one and only. All right, uh, that case then, best uh, art of the week then. Um, is this a trickier question, Connor? No, it's Freedom Fires. <laughs> Matt. Oh, it's it's Campbell and Naomi. Yeah, I'm going with Naomi too. Hand, hands down. Yeah. I, I will be fair. I'm, I'm willing to say that if I was reading that, I would probably agree because I do like Campbell a lot. It's really good. It's good so, stuff. So, you know. I'm not going to dispute that. All right, top five books of the week then. Let's go to Matt. Number one, Naomi. Number two, Shazam. Number three, Aquaman. Number four, Freedom Fighters. Number five, Justice League. There you go, short and sweet. Connor. Yeah. Well, Freedom Fighters is number one. (laughs) (laughs) Then Tumbleweed. (laughs) <laughs> I, no, Aquaman was uh, was, was, was alright. <laughs> then, then Justice League, <sighs> and then Shazam. Mm-hmm. Those those are all still in the positive half of the of of the sure, meter. Sure, they, sure. they were all six and up. I, technically, Batman would be in it. It was four. It doesn't really feel like it belongs there. Okay, okay. Um, my number one is also Naomi. Very, very good. Uh, number two is Aquaman. Number three is Shazam. Number four is Freedom Fighters. This is is this the same as Matt's or very or was it slightly different? I, I had Aquaman at three. Right. Okay. Number so four was Freedom Fighters, and then five was JL or JL. Right. Okay. So I had Freedom. I had Aquaman, then Shazam, and then I have Freedom Fighters at number four, and then number five. I guess by oh sideways sideways is number seven. Uh, I give that a seven. Yeah, sideways. There you go. Sideways is over Justice League and Batman. Yeah. There you go. That's the top fives. Uh, but I remember this week, of course, to ask our, our beloved audience on the Twitter. Oh, no, get you. Uh, what their favorite book of the week was, and I can, I can have a look at these, and I'll read a couple of them. Do 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 do. Let me just find the tweet so i can should have had this prepared in advance really shouldn't you shut up all right here we go so uh you know you're right there was a lot of love for naomi uh some love for freedom fighters so those were getting a lot of the love um at talking superman said no me issue one it's nothing it's like nothing else and the big two are putting out right now small scale and already inspiring extremely strong first issue uh also from at philosopher pop if I say that right, uh, no me issue one is a great first issue. Enough plot and mystery threads involving the protagonist, who is a tough black girl, which is a welcome point of view. The art is amazing and it has an extra layer. No gratuitous sexualization. Uh, it passes the Bechdel test as well. I uh, loved it. So a couple of really positive opinions on Naomi. Um, and just to give a sort of counterpoint to that, uh, at FlexMentalo191 said, Even though I'm not sure where Snyder and Tynan's story is headed, I really enjoyed the world building and plot developments in this week's Justice League. The art is strong and I am into all of the DC history they're referencing. So, there you go. That's a few picks. Um, there you go. So. Cool. There you go. Uh, so, I said there you go like five times there. Uh, but that is, that, that is... That uh, is... Uh, the picks of the week from the community so what am I left to do but tell you what's coming next week everything is coming next also week. plugging I need to plug stuff you forgot something in the news did I? you did you oh, forgot a delay there was a delay you're right there was a delay <sighs> I've just I've just remembered now and I'm thinking oh week four what's which, usually on week four which is funny I mean it wasn't on week four before anyway it's already moved past that but no I know but I yeah. just mean it, the last couple have come out on week four right uh, well the last one didn't but it was week four traditionally for a long time oh, that's fun okay uh, Doomsday Clock uh, the next issue got pushed again another week uh, this time so now it's on the third week of February as the next issue yeah the twentieth I want to say which 
is because the week after that is the week that Connor might have to miss an episode, so it's actually been nudged closer and closer to the danger zone. I'm I'm actually getting concerned now. <laughs> it, with Joe, I might be a case of even if I don't have time to read any of my other books, I'll read Doomsday Clock. Come on, we'll do that discussion and then head off and leave you to it. <laughs> Not missing it again. I won't allow that. <laughs> you can't stop me. I'll tell you I've read all my books and then I'll just end call. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear uh, so yeah what's coming next week then we have Heroes in Crisis issue 5 we have Detective Comics 997 Action Comics 1007 Wonder Woman issue 3 Justice League annual number 1 sorry, Wonder Woman issue 3 63, 63. sorry 63 <laughs> did I miss a 60 there sorry yeah you yeah, did, did. Uh, Justice League annual number 1 The Flash 63 along with The Flash annual number 2 Batgirl 31, Justice League Odyssey issue 5, The Terrifics number 12, The Silencer number 13. Uh, that's what we'll be covering next week. Also out though, there's a, an anthology for uh, Valentine's a little bit early. It's Mysteries in Love, of Love and Space issue 1. Uh, oh, given how many it. books we have though, and that that's like a 800 page book, there's no way in hell yeah. we're doing that next it, week. <laughs> spoiler, that, that, that would be my uh, cover, because that cover cracks me up every time I see it. Sure. So, <laughs> that's fair. You know. Uh, uh, also out next week we will not be covering is Beyond uh, Batman Beyond number 28 Curse of Brimstone annual number 1 although Connor will get there Old Lady Harley issue 4 Raven Daughter of Darkness number 12 and Teen Titans annual number 1 unless something's been moved from when it was solicited but that's the that was the schedule so sounds, sounds about right big week big week we got 2, 4, yeah. 6, 8, 10 11 11 books next week so big big week uh, so need for questions or anything like that but that is what's coming uh Sorry, I just looked at the cover for the Teen Titans annual. I just wanted to see if it was a different writer. So mm -hmm. Maybe yeah, it was a one not. shot. It's not. It's Damon, Damien uh, jumping down to attack Jason. Again, I never should have trusted you, Red Hood. <laughs> I'm just like, yeah, beat him up, Jason. <laughs> uh, maybe Connor will read that annual. <laughs> <laughs> No. So there you go. That is what's coming next week, and yeah, all that's left to do is kind of plug things and tell you what's happening, what you can do, and how you can support us and all that other stuff. Uh, you can of course like, subscribe, and comment. Of course, let us know what you think of the books. We always like to hear that. Uh, but you can get us on Patreon.com/slash/MailFuzzTV, as we mentioned. You can support us for as little as a dollar per month, and you can get some bonuses. You get access to the monthly episode. Me and Connor should be recording the Doom Patrol Volume One by Grant Morrison episode. Uh, in the next few days. It was meant to be this week, but it ended up in 16 issues long that trade and it took longer to read than we were anticipating, so we're still working our way through it. Yeah. Uh, so that's that, and then of course you can actually buy merch now, there'll be links in the description to both the US and the UK stores. Uh, a bunch of people have actually bought hoodies for Comics from the Multiverse, and at least one Comics from the Multiverse hat has yeah. been sold. So, and it yeah. wasn't to Matt. And it wasn't to Matt, not, not yet. yet. Yeah. So you can go buy some merch. We do get a cut of that as well, so that is also supporting us. Uh, you can, if you want to go get some stuff. There's also obviously other shows have merch as well as Mail Fuzz TV in general. Uh, but you can have a look at that. Uh, otherwise, though, that is us. You can get us on Twitter at DC Comics Podcast. You can get me on Twitter at Wibble eighty nine. You can get Matt on Twitter at Matt of Steel fifty seven. You can get Connor on Twitter at Connor Ryan. Who cares? So thank you very much uh, for. <laughs> it's fine. I don't use Twitter. <laughs> so you. Can... So, thank you very much for uh, watching all this. We always appreciate it. Keep reading DC Comics. And always remember to never get lost in the Speed Force. Yeah, uh, kind of right, whatever. That's great. <laughs>